Good evening. Can I draw your attention to the 50-yard line? This fall, we were fortunate to have seen the resurgence of our girls' tennis program. After going, going four years without a program, the high school was able to have a program that competed in nine regular season matches, the Apollo Conference Tournament, and the IHSA sectionals. Tonight, it's our honor to recognize the lone senior of that 2022-23 Taylorville High School girls tennis team, Ms. Macy Richards. Macy is the daughter of Brian and Cindy Richards. While at Taylorville High School, Macy has been part of Tommy TV, Key Club, Student Council, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Purple Rain, National Honor Society, CEO, 4-H, Quarterback Club, and the Christian County Youth Leadership Team. Macy's plans after high school are to attend a four-year university to major in secondary education and minor in business. Her favorite memory from tennis this year was going to Odd Garden with Coach Brown and her teammates after the sectional tournament. Congratulations, Macy on your senior year and starting the tennis program off again for the Taylorville Tornadoes.
here and I'm in charge of the gold walk. Why are you doing the gold walk? So the idea for the Gold Walk started on a student council trip that we went on in June. We were in Kansas City and I got that idea from a Texas high school. Uh, they had a week-long project that they did over all types of cancer and Taylorville knew that we wanted to do something about cancer, just one type of cancer, and we decided to do childhood cancer awareness because we are a high school and we all are kids. Could you explain the pledge sheet and where you can get one? The pledge sheets are available in the office, Miss Crow's room, or on the website. And the pledge sheet, you can either do a flat rate donation for how many laps you walk. So if you go to somebody that you want to get your pledge money from, they can give you a flat rate donation. Or you can get a by lap donation. So say somebody donates you $5 per lap and you do four laps, you'll get $20 from that person for the pledges and the donations. So when will the pledge money be collected from those that pledged? From the pledge sheets, the money will be collected at the walk if it's a flat rate donation. And for the per lap donations, those will be collected within a week time frame and you are responsible for getting your own money for that. So is it the responsibility of the walker to collect the pledges or student council? It is the responsibility of the walker to collect their own pledges for what they got donated to them. Where and who does the walker turn in their pledges? The walker can turn in their pledges to the main office, Miss Crow, or Mr. Wilson. So how will the walk work? The walk will work starting at 9.15, we'll start our registration process, and then the walk will start at 10 a.m. and it'll go until 12 p.m. You can take breaks during the walk, we'll have a bake sale going on, we'll be selling water, we'll have music to listen to, it'll just be a really fun time, only two and a half hours basically, and it'll just be a great time, we'll all have a bunch of fun. Who can participate in the walk? Anyone can participate from the walk. You do not have to be a student at THS or a community member of Taylorville to participate. You can bring your cousin from Aruba if you want, just anybody available. What are the times and the location of the walk? Registration for the Gold Walk starts at 9.15 on October 22nd, and then the actual walk takes place from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. So you're having a silent auction and a raffle basket. What can, uh, can you elaborate on those? The silent auction will take place with our bigger item baskets, so those will be worth upwards of $100 to $650, and then our raffle baskets will be from $10 to $100. Do you have anything else planned for the event? So during the event, we're going to have the raffle baskets going on. Those will be taking place through the entire time, and then the drawings for those will happen at 12 p.m. And then also during the walk, we're going to be selling wristbands, car magnets, t-shirts, and then like I said, there's going to be a bake sale and they'll also be selling waters. If anyone has any questions, who should they get a hold of? If you have any questions about the Gold Walk, you should get in contact with me, Abigail Mazir, Carly Ruckstrode, Miss Crow, or Mr. Wilson. Thank you.
I'll be your referee tonight. My left, Kevin Bird, will be your line judge. Mr. John Carls will be your umpire. Mr. Dave Maddock will be your back judge. And Mr. Boyd Marquardt will be your line judge. If you guys got any questions during the game, you have any problems, please come see one of us and take care of it for you. Okay? We expect good sportsmanship from both teams, but especially from the coaches and the captains. If we have problems on the field, we will come get one of you to take care of it for us. Coaches, can I count on your support? Thank you. Captains, can I count on your support? Thank you very much. We'll do the I got a dollar piece, heads, tails, tails, heads. We'll let it drop. What's your call? Tails. He calls tails. Here we go. It is tails. All right, you want the toss? Okay. They're deferring to the second half. It's your choice of the first one. Pick your seat. Hold your seat. You have your choice of ends to defend. Kick to the scoreboard. All right, so put your back to the end. Over here. Taylorville's choice in the first half. They're going to receive at the scoreboard. It'll be your choice in the second half. You guys got any questions? None? All right, have a good game, guys.
Dogs is our next one. And of course, Scooter's Coffee, or um, excuse me, Brandon Bible Country Financial Player of the Game, which we will talk about at the end of the game. You're listening to WTIM, your information station. We'll be right back right after this. Whatever temperatures this summer brings, your friendly and knowledgeable Bryant dealer is ready to help. Your dealer is committed to achieving a high level of training and skills and backed by outstanding products from one of the industry's most trusted names, Bryant. Whether you need a quick fix or an entirely new cooling system, your local Bryant dealer will do whatever it takes for your family's comfort. Schedule an appointment today by calling Blakely Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing at 824-4684. That's 824-4684. Bryant, whatever it takes. High school football means lots of action up and down the field, touchdowns and cheering on your favorite team. You and your family need the nutrition and protein that farmer-owned Prairie Farms dairy products provide. Prairie Farms milk, flavored milk, cottage cheese, yogurt, dip, sour cream, and 100% Florida orange juice all provide lots of protein, vitamins, and minerals for the game or day-to-day -day activities. Choose farmer-owned Prairie Farms dairy products at your grocer or convenience store dairy case to stay in the game. Now's the time to order your new 23 vehicle or choose from over 400 pre-owned vehicles in our family dealerships. General Manager Bill Pinkston here from Landmark Potato your GM Superstore. You can now order your 23 model car or truck, including the Refresh, Chevy Silverado, and GMC Sierra. Let us help you choose what 23 will work for you, or let us find your next pre-owned vehicle from our family of dealerships. And yes, we will still buy your vehicle, even if you don't buy it. In the playing of our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. Excellence with integrity, that's our policy. And welcome back to Taylorville Tornado Football. We're going to sit down and talk to Coach Jeb Odom a little bit about what he saw last week against uh, Lincoln, and what he's looking forward to this week as Taylorville Tornadoes look to pick up a second win this season against Civic Memorial. We'll be right back. This is uh, our interview with Coach Jeb Odom. Coach, you guys had a big game against Lincoln last week. You guys came out of the gates relatively quick, scored a touchdown on your opening drive. That had to feel uh, feel good to be able to get that offense working. It seemed like you were able to move the ball pretty well starting off with the game uh, last week. Yeah, I mean, I thought we came out um, really like the game plan in terms of you know how we wanted to run the ball and, and kind of the things we've been working on the last couple of weeks with some duo and some power and counter stuff, and, and that was kind of our focus on running the football, and we added some wrinkles passing the ball and that was what our touchdown was it was a new play we put in that that we're going to look at using you know next year so um you know kind of a combination of really working on uh being more physical to point of attack and then kind of tweaking the passing game to make uh, our quarterback a little bit more comfortable so uh worked out pretty well for us on that first drive you guys had your second highest most points scored in a game this season uh do you uh I do you see a lot of improvement from where this team was at the beginning of the year to to where it is now, especially on the offense? Yeah, and we're getting better. We're getting better in, in a lot of different spots. Um, just the physicality is not quite there yet. You know, when you're throwing you know six and seven sophomores out there, um, you know, throughout the course of a year, and when kids kind of wear the wear and tear of a game kind of breaks you down a little bit. So uh, we are seeing signs of, of improvement. It's not obviously where we want it to be at, but. Um, 
you know, the, the kids keep showing up. And I think that's the biggest thing with this group is, you know, we've had a really good week of practice so far and lots of smiles. The kids are working hard and, um, you know, they're, they're, they're playing the game the right way. And, and, you know, I can't say that about groups in years past at this, at this point in, in the season, but uh, this group still seems to like to, to enjoy being around each other. What have you noticed out of some of the seniors this year, coach? Uh, you know, they, they've done a nice leading. You know, it's been a little bit weird, a little bit different group of seniors. We've, we've had a lot of, you know, uh, you know, we had a senior that missed the majority of the first six weeks with a uh, medical condition that we finally got him back. Uh, you know, we had some injuries and a concussion, you know, midway through the season. And we just got those guys back the, the, uh, last week or, and this week. So, um, it was a smaller group to begin with and they've, they've fought as hard as they possibly can. Um, we've had some, some bumps along the way and some bad breaks, you know, that didn't kind of go our way. Uh, but those guys have done a great job for us and, and, and I'm going to be sad to see them go. Yeah. And, and, and with that, uh, I mean, you look at what they've all been through over the last four years and, uh, it, it talk, I mean, you've seen them grow from, from all the way from seventh and eighth graders all the way to, to what they are now. It's got to, I know it seems kind of cliche, but it's got to be really, really cool to watch these kids grow up and become really, really, you know, good football players. Well, I, this senior group is interesting because, you know, I, I've always been very staunch about wanting to play three levels of football. And I think we've got an, we usually have enough kids to play a varsity and, and a JV level and a freshman level. And this, this year's group of seniors, um, I believed when they were freshmen because I wanted to have three levels. I think they played like 16 or 17 games that year. Uh, so a guy like Colin Albright would start at quarterback for the freshman team on a Thursday uh, and then turn around and, and start at free safety and play some quarterback on a Monday. And we did that over and over and over again. Um, and, you know, they, they took a lot of, you know, they played a lot of football early on in their career. And then, you know, the, the madness that was COVID took some of those games away. And then, uh, you know, seven of those, of those guys were able to stick it out with us and, um, and kind of fight through all the nonsense that was COVID and, um, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's definitely a group I'm going to remember. Um, but like I said earlier, they, they keep wanting to show up. You know, a lot of those seniors, because of the injury bug and because of the things they're having, could have very easily just walked away from, from the sport um, to get ready for other sports or just to focus on being a student. Um, and, and these seven kids, you know, young men, did do that, and I'm very proud of them for that. What are you looking forward to this week in, uh, in your final game of the season and then in, in the big game against Civic Memorial? Well, you got two teams that are coming in fighting for that last win. Uh, we both have identical records. We both have, have had pretty, um, you know, pretty unique circumstances. I, I believe Civic Memorial, their, their starting quarterback, the returner, didn't come back from, you know, he's a baseball kid. So uh, he decided to focus on that, and they've had a couple kids playing quarterback for him. Um, I think they've settled on a sophomore that's doing a really nice job for him, throwing the ball, you know, seventy percent of the time. Um, against Jersey last week, they sat out a bunch of linemen. Uh, they didn't do very well. Uh, but when you watch, look at their sideline, there's about four or five guys there that were in their starting lineup that just for whatever reason weren't there against Jerseyville, and we're anticipating them to come back. So, um, you know, you look at their record, but you also look at those guys that, that they have coming back. Um, they've got a, a defensive lineman that's very, very good. Um, very aggressive, very physical. They've got a couple offensive linemen. One's been offered uh, some D2 offers, and, and those kids can play. So um, it's it's going to be a very unique challenge for us um, on, on many fronts. Coach, anything else that you want to say about this uh, matchup or maybe um, just a reflection on this year? No, it, it's interesting this year. Obviously, you know, wins and losses, it hasn't gone the way we wanted. But, you know, we had a, a situation come up last week where – um, community, you know, high school groups and community groups were asked to put together uh, some baskets and some things for uh, a local fundraiser. And so I, I you know, I had uh, Joey Rusher uh, approach our parents about putting something together, and they put together this wagon that's just absolutely incredible. Um, you know, all kinds of gifts and, and items that can be ra- raffled off, and toys and games, and I think there's some gift cards in there. Um, and it, it was very heartwarming to see how big it was. And, and Mrs. Crow, our student council advisor, was the one put it together. She was very impressed with what our parents were able to do. So uh, I want to give a, a big shout out to our parents for, and our supporters who have been with us through uh, a lot of ups and downs this year. I know the winds haven't been what we wanted, but uh, it was very heartwarming to see that, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, we want to win games, uh, but creating a solid foundation for, for the kids to be good young men that are surrounded by a good family. And I think that's what we have here. And, and this basket is kind of symbolic of, 
uh, of what we have. So I want to say thank you to the parents and, and everyone who's involved with that. Coach, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And there is our interview with Coach Jeb Oda. I'm talking to him a little bit about what he uh, working this year with the, the seniors and what he expects to see tonight in a big matchup against Civic Memorial. Again, both teams looking for their second win on the season. And Taylorville, you know, were able to score really quick against Lincoln last, last week. And I talked, you know, Coach Jeb Odom saying, you know, look, that's a big deal. We can score early. We can we can really make a difference. So I think part of the keys to the game are going to be be physical, give ba co quarterback Baron Odom time to throw. If they're able to do that, that'll be a pretty big deal. And then obviously, you know, mental mistakes. They have to keep the mental mistakes down. And if they can make fewer mistakes than Civic, they should come away with a win, which is a pretty big deal for this uh, for this young uh, this young team. All right, we're gonna take one last break. When we come back, uh, we will have the kickoff as. Uh, get ready to go here for that more coming up right here on WTIM your information station loading the kids in the car brokering peace in the back seat mastering the snack handoff without even looking why are simple things sometimes so complicated thankfully with auto owners insurance doesn't have to be one of them we work with independent agents who keep insurance simple so you can worry about more important things like figuring out what's growing in that cup holder that's simple human sense Call me, Casey McClure, at McClure Hubbard Insurance for all your insurance needs. 824-2266. We can keep your farm growing. Jared Beckham here, Vice President and Chief Lending Officer at First National Bank in Taylorville. When it comes to agricultural lending, your lender should be as strong as the equipment it finances. We at the First National Bank in Taylorville have over 60 years of serving agriculture. We have a relationship with our customers, providing them credit for inputs, equipment, and real estate. See us today and let First National Bank in Taylorville work for you, member FDIC. And welcome back to Taylorville Tornado Football. Last game of the season, Taylorville looking for their second win. Big win against Civic Memorial tonight as they get ready to go. Both teams wearing purple and white. No, I'm just kidding. Taylorville wearing purple jerseys, gold shorts. Civic wearing their white jerseys, purple pants. And Clark Rare back as uh, Civic deferred. Won the toss and to Ferd, so they will receive in the second half. Clark Rare back. We are ready to go here for some Friday Night Lights high school football. Is getting ready to kick off. Carson Clock yet? No, no, it's number. Who is that? It's number. Oh, it looks like Jacob Flowers getting ready to kick off. Flowers will kick. No, here we go. Here's the kick, and we are up and we are underway. And Rare gets it at the. 15 and he's off to the 25 30 and then pulled down around the 30 yard line. And that is where quarterback Baron Odom will set up shop on this wonderful, beautiful Friday night. It's a gorgeous day. We had a little bit of a cold streak, obviously, a little bit earlier in the week. Temperatures have started to warm up nicely and uh, a great night for football. And I was talking to some of the guys up here in the booth a little bit earlier. For the most part, we've had some pretty good weather for Friday nights, considering uh, what could have been, and uh, we are very, very grateful for that as uh, we look to get things going here. And Taylor would love nothing more than to get a quick strike and a quick touchdown. Let's see if they're able to do that. Two wide receivers on the right, otherwise kind of open on the left-hand side. Everybody's stacked up on the right side of the box. Baron Odom under center. He gets ready to go. Fakes the handoff and looking to throw quick. Deep throw on the very first play to Clark Rare. It's up and it gets intercepted. On the very first play, it gets intercepted, picked off by Michael Atterbury. And there is a flag on the play, but a big interception to get things kicked off. I get what you're trying to do there. You're trying to get to break the game open right away on the very first drive, but the throw was a little bit underthrown. And because of that, an interception to get the, to lead things off. It's going to be against Civic, I believe. It's pass interference, I believe. Since the referees were still conversing. Lock in the back, maybe. Taylorville might catch a huge break on this one. So 
So it is an interception, but the Eagles will back up a long way. And so now they will take over at their own 21 yard line. And the quick handoff, the right hand side through, and Will Peeney gets through for a good run from him. We'll get you some names and numbers here in a little bit from the young running back. He's second and two from the 31. Let's see if we can get you some more information here. Throw is just a little bit short. Jack Peening, quarterback in. Peening in the shotgun, another handoff. This time finds another hole, enough for a first down. Runs over the hand side, gets up and through, down to about the 39 yard line. Another big gain for the Eagles. And so another big run. Brings up a first and 10 from the 38, 11.02 left. Taylor will start with the ball, but on a huge throw. The throw is a little bit short, and Eagles are now driving their own. Another handoff, some on the right-hand side. Got plenty of room, but she's up, and a big gain from Andrew Fonardana. As he was able to gain some pretty significant ground of about Eight yards on the play. Six yards, seven yards on the play. So it would be second and four from the 46. So, Jack Peening. Back to the shotgun formation for him. Another handoff. Pushes forward enough for the first down. And then some. As that run gets through there. So now it's going to be a first and ten ball at the 50 for, for Pining. Pining, another hand off. Right hand side breaks through a couple tackles, then being pulled down on the right near the right hash marks on the on the run from him. And again, Civic not doing anything too crazy, just running, 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 and it makes it a second and three from the 43-yard line. As the Eagles are now in territory, uh, Taylorville territory. Eagles trying to score their first points in two weeks. Can they do it? Another drive forward, enough for a first down, and then some as the pile kind of falls on top of each other. Pass the first down marker close to the 37 yard line. Another big run for Will Pining. Jack and Will Pining have been the guys here, number 18 and 14. Let's see what Pining does here. Under center. One wide receiver on the right, but. Two running backs, and now Taylorville's ready for it. They push way back. Wanted to see how many running plays it was going to take before Taylorville finally stacked the box. They did that time, and it's a bit, pretty big loss. Actually, not even. It'll be second and nine after forward progress. Or second and 11, excuse me. Second and 11 after progress. So, let's see if they run again here. Taylorville stacking the box one more time, showing blitz. All the running backs. Everybody runs forward. Another handoff, and this time breaks through the line again. This time gets all the way up to the 35. Another run for Will Pining. Will and Jack Pining doing everything here for Civic right now. The Civic is trying to score for the first time in two weeks. Third and seven. 35 yard line. This is a big, big play right here for Taylorville. Defense trying to stand strong. Civic has yet to have a pass play on this drive. See what they do here. Now it's split set. Four wide receivers. Well, only three as Audible moves them back. Man in motion. Another handoff. Breaks over the left. This time Taylorville ready for it. They stop him. Yes, Nicholas Wirtz was the man in motion on that one. Did not have anywhere to go. And on the sweep, falls short. They'll bring up a fourth and five from the 33, so the drive stalls out. And 
Now Civic will be faced with a difficult decision with a fourth and five from the 33-yard line. This early in the game, you had good success running the ball. Be interesting to see if they just go for it. Taylorville, I would imagine Taylorville should be ready for just a run. And now a timeout is taken as Civic's going to try to figure out what they want to do. So after an interception from Baron Odom to start off the game, Civic Memorial drove the ball all the way down from their own 23-yard line down to the 33 of Taylorville. And now the drive is kind of stalled as it sits on a fourth and five from the 33. Nothing, nothing score here, 7-16 just underway here in this first quarter. Hope you guys are having a great Friday night. Glad to, that you chose to spend it with us. Taylorville and Civic both looking for their second wins on the season in this non-conference matchup between the two te teams. And uh, I would argue that neither of these teams really expected to sit with this record where, uh, as it was this year. Um, from what I understand, Civic Memorial's quarterback quit two days before the season started to focus on baseball. And when you lose your quarterback that close to the season, that does have a pretty significant impact on your team. And Civic scored 24 points to start off the season and then didn't score more than six the rest of the uh, campaign. So here we go. Here's a ton of movement. They, I tell you what, Civic's been getting close all day uh, to having that call made. And this time the referees got them. So they'll bring up a fourth and ten on the false start from Civic. Good ball. Yeah, Civic Memorial has been kind of testing that that referee with the false starts. They've come close a couple times, got the benefit of not getting the call, but that time there was a ton of movement on that right side of the field, and they got in trouble for it. So now it brings up a fourth and ten, and it looks like Civic's going to punt now. Here it is, and here is the punt. It's up and through, and goes into the end zone for a touchback. Always dangerous to play those touchbacks, to play those punts within the 10 yard line. Ask the Bears how that goes. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, Taylorville will take over. Uh, nothing, nothing, score 7-10 here in the first quarter. High school football means lots of action up and down the field. Touchdowns and cheering on your favorite team. You and your family need the nutrition and protein that farmer-owned Prairie Farms dairy products provide. Prairie Farms milk, flavored milk, cottage cheese, yogurt, dip, sour cream, and 100% Florida orange juice all provide lots of protein, vitamins, and minerals for the game or day-to-day -day activities. Choose farmer-owned Prairie Farms dairy products at your grocer or convenience store dairy case to stay in the game. No, not us, our other game. Yeah. Welcome back to Taylorville as we get ready for first plays. Uh, Drive over the left, right hand side. Good carry from Seth Hughes. And we saw a ton of Seth Hughes against Lincoln. It was the Seth Hughes show against Lincoln, who had a fantastic game uh, until the fourth quarter when he had a, a very, very uh, big fumble close to the 25 yard line as Taylorville was driving on one of the last drive, play, drives of the game. Uh, that was the only mark, bad mark on his whole campaign as he was the Brandon Bible Country Financial Player of the Game last, uh, last week against Lincoln. Odom in the shotgun, quick throw over the, to the left on a screen play, gets through and then gets tripped up close to the 34-yard line. Not a whole lot going on that play. And so that play was to Finn Neiman. Neiman will step out for a play. Neiman had gain of three, so they'll bring up a second seven from the 33 for the Tornadoes. One, right, one wide receiver on the left, one on the right. Odom in the shotgun, looking to go. Hands it off to Hughes. This time he finds a hole, breaks through the left for the first time, and then some. Tries to strip the ball, unable to. Now up to the 50, and then pulled down close to the 49 on a big run for Seth Hughes, who found a couple of holes, got a couple of favorable tackles to help him out. Had, almost had the ball stripped from him, but was able to hold on to it. And because of that, Taylor will pick up a first down. It'll be first and 10 from the 49. Again, this Tornado team has been able to move the ball very, very well with Seth Hughes. We'll see if they keep going. And after the interception, I would imagine that Baron Oden might be a little gun shy to throw the ball deep. We'll see what they call here. And now a timeout taken from Taylorville. Coach Jeb Odom holding up his hands like, what was that? 
You're listening to WTIM, your information station, and uh, it is nothing, nothing. 532 left here in the first quarter. We'll be right back. Right after this. This is Jennifer Flanken's daughter, Isabella. My mom's with the Kathy Garst sales team at the Real Estate Group in Taylorville. I'm Ellie Keel, Ryan's daughter. We're together to help you buy or sell your home in Christian County. I know my mom and her team have lots of experience in the real estate industry. And they have a cool looking office right on the square in Taylorville. Come see my mom, Brian, or Jennifer at the Kathy Gar sales team. They're trusted, dedicated, and connected. Now's the time to order your new 23 vehicle or choose from our over 400 pre-owned vehicles in our family dealerships. General Manager Bill Pinkston here from Landmark and Taylor, your GMC. You can now order your 23 model car or truck, including the refresh, Chevy Silverado, and GMC Sierra. Let us help you choose what 23 will work for you, or let us find your next pre-owned vehicle from our family of dealerships. And yes, we will still buy your vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. Your GM Superstore is Landmark and Taylor, online at landmarkandtaylor.com. And remember... And we'll go back to Taylorville. Set to use another carry. This time finds a hold. Another first down, and then some down to the 35 and pulled down around the 30 on a, just a simple run route over the left hand side. Got a couple favorable blocks and able to push forward. Another first down, another big gain for number 14, Seth Hughes in Taylorville. In business here after two big runs from number from the young running back. And now Baron Odom just takes it himself, pushing forward, and the line was not ready for it, which means results in Baron getting a pretty significant gain. Now there is a flag on the sidelines that came from the Civic Memorial sideline. Let's see what they call here on this flag. 5.15 left here in the first quarter. Nothing, nothing score. Taylorville driving, but let's see what the penalty is. Warning on sideline violation. Sideline warning on Bethalto. Probably just oh, no yardage, warning. just a warning. Sideline warning against the Eagle. Result of that penalty, no yardage parked on. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You got to watch it. They'll come off the sidelines and get on the field and get in trouble. And that has really plagued Civic Memorial this year. Penalties and other issues that they've ran into. It really has kind of hurt them. Now the referees will discuss again. Baron Odom has uh, threw an interception on the first play of the game and then has really, really settled down to really, really do some some damage here. Second and five from the 26. Baron Odom in the shotgun. Rolls out to his right-hand side, pitches it over to Hughes, takes off running up to the 15. Still on his feet, then finally pulled down around the 12. Looked like he was duck walking for a little bit as uh, Number 44, that is uh, Jacob Flowers on the tackle. Flowers had him by the legs and he was still moving. So it'll be first and 10 from the 14 and Taylorville in the red zone for the first time today. Baron Odom has looked in control here on this drive. Really, it's been the Seth Hughes show. Hughes, I don't know, he had to have touched the ball 40 times in that game against Lincoln resulting one of the other uh, people up in the booth last week on the road to say, to comment on just how much energy he has. Spin, spin, another spin move for Seth Hughes and finally gets pulled down close to the eight yard line. Six yard line, good run. Second and six from the nine, nine yard line, excuse me. And so, yeah, second and six from the nine. But yeah, they were talking about just how good Seth Hughes has been and how he, you know, he touched the ball at least 40 times in that game against Lincoln. And sure enough, here against Civic Memorial, he's been touching the ball a whole lot here, especially on this drive. In fact, it's been the Seth Hughes show this whole drive. So let's see what they do here. Baron Odom in the shotgun, Seth lining up behind him, one, one wide receiver on each side, and now a flag comes in again. And it's going to be offsides on offsides on Civic again. Get to the snap. Encroachment. Defense. So another Half line the violation for second the Eagles. And Taylorville will get some free yardage. I believe it'll be second and one. Yeah, second and one from the four. So second and 
Might as well just see if they just put high snap. Hughes gets it, pushes forward close to the line. And no signal yet. They're going to say he stopped short. Down to the one. So first and goal from the one yard line. And Taylorville now working quick. Can they score here? Another handoff. Pushes through and finds the hole and in for the score. And Taylorville Tornadoes touchdown for Seth Hughes and the Taylorville Tornadoes lead 6 0. Found a gap and Hughes' legs just went churning and he pushed hard as he could and ran as fast as he could. And he poured on the Jets and jumped over a couple defenders and was in for the score. They're looking for somebody. Oh, looking for the... <laughs> now we're good to go. Yeah, 10 seconds, they gotta hurry up. <laughs> there we go, now Barron's off. Seth Hughes is set, holds it, kick is up, and it's blocked. And the flag comes in as he ran over the kicker. Oh my goodness, well, what a turn of events on that one. Rough the kicker on the Eagles. <laughs> now, a lot of times at this, you know, when, when you run into the kicker, as long as the play is blocked, generally it's free game. But they called it anyway this time, and Taylorville might, Taylorville might have caught a break on this one because that's usually not something that gets, that's usually not something that gets called on a blocked kick. And joining us here is our good friend Avery Cooper here we'll get him all ready as we got cords and all kinds of stuff all over the place now another flag comes in no penalty extra point is no good and so it'll stay six nothing Avery Cooper, Taylorville, threw an interception on the very first play. Baron Odom launched the ball as hard as he could. Ball was caught by Civic Memorial on the interception as the throw was slightly underthrown. Civic drove down. The drive stalled out close to the 25-yard line, and then they got a couple penalties that pushed them back, and they were forced to punt. It then became the Seth Hughes show. Seth Hughes ran all the way from the 25 to the touchdown to the end zone on about five, six plays. And Taylorville has a six nothing lead. Fantastic, wow. You know, can I, may I guess for a moment what happened on the interception? Yes. Pressure, a little bit of pressure. No, I, the throw no? is just underthrown. Mm, okay. uh, he had all day to throw it. All right. Um, and they threw it relatively quick. It just, the throw was underthrown and Clark Rare was just a couple steps off the mark. Rare mm. had to turn around and come back and, um, Michael Atterbury was in the way for Civic Memorial. Atterbury's so. someone to pay attention to. He shows up in tape quite a bit. That doesn't that does not surprise me at all right there that Atterbury made the play. So as it sits, it is six nothing after we catch uh, Avery up to speed here. Three thirty three left in the first quarter after the touchdown from Taylorville. Taylorville had the extra point blocked, but got a roughing the kicker after the blocked kick, which most of the time does not count. I mean, after a kick is blocked, you can do whatever you want to the kicker. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that was not the case here. As Taylorville caught a break, it didn't matter. As Taylorville was not able to score on the extra point anyway. Uh, and so here we go with the kickoff, and Taylorville's kickoff is a high short kick down to the 26, and actually fair caught, and another flag comes in. Well, I may have missed most of this first quarter, but I do know it's been a laundry fest. Uh, it really has. Uh, there's now been a ton of laundry, catch and really on a lot of it's been on team. Civic be five yard penalty penalty is, first down this way. as well. Huh. Interesting. So, interesting to see how the Taylorville defense continues to answer. I know Civic likes to run the ball in that heavy running back yeah, formation. Civic did not have one pass in that entire first drive. And they're going to make you do that until eventually you choke up and you're just, you don't expect them to pass. They can pass the ball. And here they spread out a little bit. So in the first drive, it was the Jack Pining and Will Pining show. 
Let's see what Jack does here in the quarterback slot. Oh, quick throw on a screen play. Does get room, breaks one tackle, then pulled down close to the 26. Ball does go out of bounds, but our ball does get fumbled, but I believe he was out of bounds when the fumble occurred. Much to the chagrin of the Taylorville bench, who are all pointing towards the right. The energy's there for the tornadoes <laughs> on the sideline today. No doubt about that. So it'll be second and six from the 26 for the Eagles. Jack Pining in the shotgun. Man in motion again, and now pushes through this Will again. And Will Pining gets a gain of maybe one, maybe two on the play. Bring it by third and four, third and three. What has Taylorville struggled with consistently on defense? Throughout the year? Just uh, playing uh, uh, too loose on defense. Run, run defense yeah. especially. Yeah. Run defense especially. And Civic looked at the tape and said, Let's run it. Well, I'd like to see a little bit more pressure from Taylorville. Show me a couple more blitz. Show me a couple more that men be, in the box. Yes. Now, this time, another throw and picked up by Jace Brauner. Brauner has enough for the first down, then gets absolutely pulled. Still didn't get tackled, but the whistles finally blow. Forward progress will give him the first down. And so it'll be first and 10 from the 37. Those two run plays prior, creating a manageable, well really a, a screen and a run, making it easier to pick up that third and short. And Civic did not have any problem moving the football. Penalties were what undermined that first drive as a fake handoff. Now running is Pining. Pining has room, right side, oh, levels. Man, the two absolutely just clocked each other. I could not see who the defender was on that one, but Pining lowered his shoulder, I think. It was Jude Neiman. There you go, Jude Neiman versus Jack Pining. Running There's for a his life away from the blue. <laughs> Get away from me! So it'll be second and three from the 44. Taylorville trying to stop this drive with less than 90 seconds left here in the first quarter. Pining and shotgun, looking to throw again. Another throw, loose pressure this time, enough for a first down and then some down to the 50 yard line on the reception. Just a curl route in the slot, turns around, ball's there. Well designed and they take advantage for first down. Nothing fancy, but it's enough. Well, and the problem that you see is when you have to move forward to try to stop the run, you end up having a situation where you have guys that can take off on passes. I'd like to see maybe set up even a spy to protect against Jack running and then play your defense for the pass. Another throw, pressure, throws to the right, and that was, oh, picked up and dropped. Oh, he had it and got absolutely hit from behind and dropped it. Avery, who? who well, Baron Odom came and made the tackle, but the, they ball, Jonathan Scroggins almost made the play in and out of his hands. Yes. And then Baron Odom came from behind and hit him. He heard footsteps for sure, and it forced the ball loose. I told, uh, let's take a look here. Well, let's see. I said earlier, I'm gonna get them mixed up as they both wear purple and white. Taylorville's wearing purple today. Here's the shotgun, rolls out to his right. Now he's under pressure on the blitz. Now he takes off, jacks forward, and then gets down. Not enough for the first down, but gets a man much more manageable third and one, third and, yeah, third and one on the play. Third and two. He's got to get to the 40 yard line, it's at the 42. Rare saves the first down, gives his body up. Great job. Jack Pining can run. We've seen it. One of the many threats back there is those running backs use a triple option, much like Mount Vernon at the very first week of the season that we saw. Now the rolls over the right hand side, still pushing forward enough for the first down is Andrew Fonradona. They like using that heavy running back set, but different from Mount Vernon, they like to spread it out here and there. And here's another example, four wide receivers. Split set, two on each side. They're gonna throw under pressure, throws deep towards, towards the end zone, but overthrows it and falls harmlessly to the ground intended for Will Pining. And the Jack Will connection continues and that will be, well, the clock stops with two seconds left in the first quarter. 
Yeah, they, like I said, they like to throw it and stretch the field. They like to get you thinking they're just a heavy run team, and then they're going to run the tight ends down the seams. The biggest difference was Mount Vernon was a run team. They told you what they were going to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Civic likes to make you think they're a run team, and they are, but they also like to pass, and they like to take shots. So they'll have time for one more play here in the first quarter. Shotgun formation for Jack Pining. Will right next to him. Rolls out a little bit. Clock expires. Still on his feet. Now he takes off and finally runs out of bounds. And that will mark the end of the first quarter. Not enough for the first down. So they'll bring up a third and six. And that is how the first quarter will end. You're listening to WTIM, your information station. We'll be right back. Right after this. Help support the Christian County YMCA by sponsoring, contributing in kind, and or attending the 34th Annual YMCA Benefit Auction on Friday, November 11th at the Pillars Event Center. Doors open at 5 p.m. Silent auction starts at 5.30 p.m. with dinner and live auction at 7 p.m. Tickets are 75 per person, maximum of 8 to a table with 200 person max. Over 100 live and silent auction items available to bid on. Come support the YMCA and help those less privileged. The Y for Youth Development, for healthy living, for social responsibility. At Taylorville Vision Source across from the high school, we are here for all your eye care and eyewear solutions. Your eyes are a window to your overall health, so schedule an exam with me, Dr. Emily Smith, today. You can also stop in any time to check out our new eyewear collections. Don't forget your vision benefits that expire at the end of the year. Let us help you get the most out of the benefits you've already paid for at Taylorville Vision Source across from high school. And we'll have one on time down. Lives. Building relationships, supporting the community, and service. These are things Country Financial stands for. We're more than just an office you may pass by as you drive through town. We're neighbors who lend a helping hand and support the fabric of our community, including charitable organizations, sports, financial education, and civic organizations. Since we're already neighbors, let's get together and chat. Call me, Brandon Bible, your local country financial representative at 217-287-2332 to talk about the things that are important to you and how we can help you protect them. And welcome back to Taylorville. A block in the back, another flag, a block in the back penalty while we were on break led to a second and 17 from the 43. Rolls off to his left hand side and pushes forward, but another penalty comes in. Avery, what did you see? Anything? Well, I saw him roll out and the flag came out right after the pass and he rolled out to the left. Was he crossed the line of scrimmage? No. Yeah, he did. So we go five yards penalty, it'll still be second down. Or we take you know, the maybe some, maybe, well, I guess we'll have to just see, see what the call is. It looks like they're conferring with Coach Odom. Eligible receiver downfield, number 17. Penalty is refused. Down. The Eagles penalty is declined. The the that makes sense. And that will mark the end of the, the quarter, but we're gonna stay here as we already had our break. But, boy, there has just been a awful lot of laundry on the field this first quarter, Avery. There has been a ton of laundry. I wish I could have been keeping track, of course, tough to do at, in my predicament, but, you know, they, it has been all against Civic Memorial. I don't know what's been going on. And well, it looks like they're gonna actually gonna take a full, and, the thing is, is Civic Memorial has not had, I mean, the biggest weakness, I think, for the Eagles has been the penalties for them this year. Mm -hmm. They've had a lot I haven't of seen a, I haven't seen, you know, obviously seen a whole lot of their game, but you have that many penalties here in the first quarter against Taylorville. Right. And, 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 and false starts. There was a couple times where Civic, on that first drive, where Civic could have been called for a false start, and they weren't. Right. Uh, what didn't come down to the third third down play, where Civic finally got called for it on a very important third down, close to the 25-yard line. Uh, so I think, and I said one of the keys to the game was, was have less penalties than Civic. Uh, it was obviously going to be a very big deal if Taylorville could have better control. And remember, this is a game that's starting to look towards next year already. How were penalties last week? Taylorville hardly had any, to be honest with you. They look pretty. They look fairly good, which is a, a, a remarkable step up for mm -hmm. what we've seen from this tornado team in the past. And Baron Odom, for the most part, against Lincoln, despite the the score, mm -hmm. looked very comfortable in that game against Lincoln. 
Uh, he even had a, a couple, couple, couple great touchdown drives. And as I said during the our interview with him this week, it was the second highest point total that uh, Taylorville scored. So I, I I hate to be the optimistic one, but I, I really feel like the future is bright for this Taylorville team on this uh, third and 17 from the 43. Now, once again, pining back, looking forward as a quick screen play out to his left-hand side. But Taylorville smelled that the whole way. Gets back to the line of scrimmage on what was a very long play that didn't result in anything. So that'll bring up a fourth and 18, actually a loss on the play after the throw comes out. Fourth and 18 from the 44. You can see just how much that means to this defense too. Boy, they, and, yeah, they love it. Yeah, and Taylorville really has been looking for that confidence level of, hey, you know what? We can do this. Mm -hmm. So I'll bring up a fourth down, and once again, Civic will be forced to punt after what started off as a great drive for the Eagles. And fake. Fake. 21. Left-hand side. On his feet. Enough for the first down. No, Close. Quite. Close. Will they give it to him? They will not. It gets back to the 10. I looked at the, the, the post strong. It's absolutely a turnover. Taylorville smelled that out and stopped it. They got back to the uh, original, to the 10-yard marker, and no more. So it will be a turnover. I looked at the markers wrong. <laughs> And uh, Taylorville will take over on a turnover on downs. A gutsy call from Civic Memorial on a fake punt. I like it and in that field position. Yeah, you know, and you're so deep into their territory, but not nearly close enough to take a field goal. And but great job for Taylorville. They were ready with it. They stacked the box. They were ready to block the punt too. At that. Yeah. First and ten from the 36 for Taylorville. And just like Avery said, I mean, you're already down in this kind of field position. You might as well try something, especially for a Civic Memorial team that, for the most part, has really moved the ball well. And speaking of that, Taylorville's first drive doesn't go very far. A run from Seth Hughes does not get anywhere. So, be a second and 12 on the loss. Of, uh, on the loss. But yeah, a great field position for Civic for uh, on, that, on that play. You might as well try something new for a team that has kind of struggled this year to get points. So, Bear Notum will try on the second and 12 from the 34. Second quarter just underway here. My name is Zurich Clamola. Joining me, Avery Cooper. Glad to have you with us this evening. Odom in the shotgun. Trips left. One wide receiver on the right. Throws to the right. And then throws to Seth Hughes. Off his right hand and falls harmlessly to his side. Would have been a first down and then some uh, if he would have caught it. You can see the difference between... Purple and gold game, Baron Odom. In the Baron Odom now, he is the footwork mostly. He's trying really hard with the footwork, and it is leading to some better balls. So it's getting there. Clark Rare checks in for Grady. Uh, hi, not. Hey, not. Hey, not. Hey, not. We'll get there. Trips left. So close. Shotgun formation, look at throw, throws quickly on a slant route over the right-hand side. Hughes pours on the Jets, pushes forward, lowers his shoulders, gets down to about the 39-yard line on the Taylorville Tornado sideline. Bring up a fourth and eight. Defensive slugfest. And the penalties, of course, haven't helped that very much, but nevertheless, you are seeing a lot of punting. And we kind of figured that was going to kind of be the case for a game like this today. Yep. Two teams that have kind of struggled with their offenses. And really finding their identity in their offense, too. Both teams. Taylorville will punt now. And here we go. Punt is up. A great punt from Blue. Holy cow. Gets down to the 25. And he botches it. Oh, down to the 20. Able to hang on as Michael Atterbury can breathe a sigh of relief. It hit Atterbury in the chest and bounced away, and Atterbury went, uh-oh, and fell on it, able to hold on to it, but a great punt, and the spiral. Eagles will set up at their own 21-yard line. The spiral, man, that from off the foot of Will Blue really did a number on Atterbury. You gotta like that, kids. First and 10 from the 21. 
It's the last game of the season. <laughs> 9.59 left here in the second quarter. So we're starting to get like, or we're finishing like we started. Got it. <laughs> Understood. Uh, so Civic will try to get something going here. And again, Civic's driven the ball fairly well today. The biggest issue has been penalties and having to drive stall out. See what Taylorville defense is able to do here. As you see, probably see a little bit more running. Sure enough, right hand side, pushing forward, breaks through the first line of defense before being throttled down and Will pi Pining, nowhere to go. Gain of about five on the play. Six, so second and four from the 26. Yeah, and that's what Civic Memorial wants to do for the remainder of this half. Run, run, run. So, Jack Pining, shotgun. Oh, a bad snap, and they're in trouble. Lands on it, just falls on it to save the drive. But that is a huge loss for the Eagles as Jack Pining lands on the ball, but it's going to be a... Third and forever. Third and 15 from the 15. Boy, that is a, that's tough luck right there. High, high snap. And I don't know what did, happened on that. It's just way, he didn't let go of it in time. You know it what I mean? Wasn't, it wasn't close. He didn't, he didn't let go of it. He, you know, at the center, when he snaps, it doesn't let go and it sticks to his hand and flings it up as high as it possibly could go. All that, all that pine tar. <laughs> Jack Pining, shotgun, looking to throw. Left side nearly picked. Instead, the ball falls incomplete. Intended for Atterbury on that left-hand side. So a fourth and 15, Jude Neiman was the one who broke that play up. And Avery, Jude Neiman on defense. Mm, that's all you have to say. He's been fantastic all year long. He's been where the ball is. Both the Neimans have been fantastic on both sides of the ball this year. Sometimes I forget which one has done which. <laughs> so fourth and 15 at the 15 yard line after the botched snap leads to a stall drive again for the Eagles. And that punt gets down to the, well, takes a favorable Taylorville bounce down to the 30. Wow, fantastic field position. A very high, high punt. Didn't go very far at all. It landed at the 35 and Look, poor Logan Cooper for the Eagles just happened to turn and look. The ball landed right in his chest, and he kind of did this. Uh, well, and I mean, hats off to the kid. He did the right thing. If he continues to let that go, it had the momentum to go to the 25, yeah. even the 20. So Taylor will set up with great field position as Baron Odom starts off first and 10 from the 30. 826 left here in the quarter in the first half. Another hand off to Hughes, right side. Pushes forward, breaks through a tackle, then gets pulled down close to the 24-yard line. Game about six on the play. Great job from the fullback, the down fullback in the formation. You could see Taylorville wanted to run it, and they Seth Hughes follows his blockers for a first down. Left hash marks for the Tornadoes on the second and four from the 24. Second and four. High formation. Another handoff. Hughes, left side help, says it's help from a blocker. Still on his feet, still on his feet, down to the 10. Then pulled down. Keeps following Isaiah Aiden. <laughs> that time it is for a first down. In a interesting pistol offset eye formation. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Hughes needs to buy Aiden McDonald's later on, I tell you what. Get him some Scooter's coffee. Powerhouse football. It's so interesting to watch, and now a timeout. Civic Memorial. Timeout taken by Civic, and so we'll take a quick 30. You're listening to Taylorville football. First and 10 from the 11. Taylorville leads 6 0, but threatening here in the red zone. As the we get through the second quarter, we'll be right back. You're listening to WTIM Information Station. High school football means lots of action up and down the field. Touchdowns and cheering on your favorite team. You and your family need your nutrition, protein, and products at your grocer or convenience store dairy case to stay in the game. 
Now's the time to order your new 23 vehicle or choose from our over 400 pre-owned vehicles in our family dealerships. General Manager Bill Pinkston here from Landmark and Taylor, your GM Superstore. You can now order your 23 model car or truck, including the Refresh, Chevy Silverado, and GMC Sierra. Let us help you choose what 23 will work for you, or let us find your next pre-owned vehicle from our family dealerships. And yes, we will still buy your vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. Your GM Superstore is Landmark and Taylor, online at landmarkandtaylor.com. And remember... From behind. Had a good run from Seth Hughes as he gets pulled down from behind, but not before rattling off another five or six yards. And that'll bring up a first and or second and five from the six. I always like it when you can get and a quick play again. Hughes jumps over a defender and then gets pulled down close to the three yard line. And so that will bring up a third and two. And Taylorville using a kind of a hurry-up offense here. I mean, when you're just handing off the ball to Hughes, you don't really need to go to the uh, huddle. And now Lead Taylorville takes off. There is a flag on the play on the quarterback sneak. And Odom pushes forward, but the penalty will come in. I believe it will be Taylorville offsides. Let's see what they call. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Taylorville sets up an down. illegal formation, and that will result in a two steps forward and five steps back be third and seven that kills the momentum a little bit they are uh, well <laughs> you, you would hope to think they are in field goal range but yeah. maybe a little bit of struggle with that considering how the extra point went on the other end the wind is blowing <laughs> wind in is, favor wind is strong tonight it's blowing to the back of the tornadoes so that, that could that assist. flag look at that flag avery yeah if they could just get it up in the air the wind will do the rest so a third and seven from the eight is where we sit taylorville needs to get to the one yard line to pick up a first down and now taylorville will take a timeout but yes, third and seven from the eight. Taylorville needs to get to the one-yard line. They do lead 6 nothing here in this non-conference matchup between the Taylorville Tornadoes and the Civic Memorial Eagles. Basketball right around the corner. we got about a month before Taylorville Tornado boys and girls kick off their season. Avery Cooper will most likely, 95% sure that Avery Cooper will be calling all of your girls' games this year. I will be calling the majority of the boys' games. And uh, Avery, what are you most excited about this girls' basketball team, bud? You know, really exciting last year to watch them develop as freshmen. And now, they're not just young basketball players. They're very talented. Maisie Fleming and Addison Tarr, both receiving some recognition around the entire nation. Um, starting to see some recruitment. And as sophomores, it'll be interesting to see just how much they've improved from their freshman year after losing a little earlier on and receiving a favorable seed in the IHSA playoffs. So third and seven, timeout is over and a bunch of movement. And let's see who the penalty is on. I believe this is gonna be on Civic. It really looked like Civic jumped the line. Let's see what they call here. And it's a offside Defense, on the Civic. Distance. So It'll once still again, be third Civic down. kind of lean forward, lean forward and then Weight and gravity took over, and they fell over. And uh, Taylorville will take the five yards. So after the five steps back, Taylorville will move five steps forward. It'll be third and two. Third and three from the four. Hughes, left-hand side, on his feet, through, and scores. And Taylorville with a touchdown to make it 12-0 on a powerful run from Seth Hughes. Avery Cooper, it's the Seth Hughes Show. Boy, is it a lot of running, running, running. And he's not doing it the way you expect Seth Hughes to do with his speed. He's doing it through the tackles, and it's very, and he's showing tenacity with it, too. He's breaking those tackles. Very fun to watch. Well, and he poured on the Jets there. He did this on the first touchdown as well and just kind of put on the afterburners and said, all right, I'm gonna run, try to catch me. Two point conversion, fakes it, rolls out to the right, holds it, pushes forward, he's gonna be just, he got, he it. got it, he got it, carried it himself, rolls out to the right hand side, close to the goal line, falls forward on the fake, Wildcat, and holy cow. A great job from Fernandos to make it 14 nothing. 
My word! Fantastic job. This, this is a design rollout on the play action. Odom going towards, he's looking for a receiver, can't find anybody. Rayar opened himself up, and but by the time that happened, Odom had to make a decision. He reached forward across the goal line right as he fell across and broke the plane for a two-point conversion. And Isaiah Aiden, a big reason for that score. Travis Burke on the sideline absolutely trying to pump up the crowd. But yeah, Isaiah Aiden is uh, the big man on that one as he was able to get in there and... And, and help out. And he's been, he did that the entire drive as the down fullback for Seth Hughes the entire way, creating a lot of great blocks, sealing off the edge, and allowing Hughes to find the hole along the inside. A fantastic job by some of the blockers, including Aiden, and the entire offensive line. So Taylorville leads 14 0 on the night. 6.56 left here in the second quarter. and. Tornadoes would love nothing more than to get a big stop right here and get the ball back and try to get some more points before halftime due to the fact that Civic will start with the ball in the second half. You do want to get a stop here and see if, absolutely, just like you said, Leroy, if you can get more points, all the power to you. Seth Hughes, 14, Civic Memorial, nothing. Taylorville will get ready to kick off here and the crowd is loud and I like it. Kicks off far right side of the, or excuse me, far left side of the hash marks. And Civic will try it. Oh, runs into a brick wall of tornadoes. Hoo -hoo -hoo. And that bench is the most liveliest I've seen all day. Waylon Wolf on the stop. And boy, I have not seen this Taylorville tornado bench this fired up in a long time. Just coming Nyack, a freight train. Oh my goodness. Just. Full speed right into him. Oh yeah, he took on his blocker too and then found the kick returner. He was there and then he wasn't. Brody Harker was also in on that stop, but my goodness, what a absolute wall. And Civic Memorial will have to regroup here, down by 14. First and 10 from the 27. Fakes the throw and now a roll run on the handoff and nothing going and Taylorville smelled that run play a mile away. Second and eight. Just want to point out Waylon Wolf is a sophomore and it's kind of it's, he's going to be one of the guys you look for next year. He made a big special teams play. Well he's going to be making more plays uh, next year especially. So Another, another fake handoff, another throw. Oh my goodness, another absolute tomahawk. Jace Bronner gets the screen. <laughs> Taylorville read that the entire way, and that is a big loss on the play. Yeah, the screens are not working as well as they did when Lincoln took it on. Look at Clark Rayer go. Oh my goodness. Just an absolute tomahawk on the stop from Rare. The wide receiver, Rare, that, anyway. That's about as textbook of a tackle as you will ever make an open field. Pining, rolls out to his right, still looking, still looking, throws it, caught, and he's got some room. Left hand side up to the 40, enough for the first down, and then some Bronner picking up the first down, and crisis averted for the Eagles after two big defensive stops from Taylorville. Be first and 10 for the 41. You still are in a great spot right now. You gave up the first down, but that's all right if you can stop him here. 524, 518, rolls on the left-hand side, pushing forward on the run. And Taylorville again in there on the stop as uh, they were able to get in there and make some make some noise. Thomas Gettings, been good to call his name. He was the one in on that stop. Gettings getting his first start in a while after dealing with some leg issues. Now Flack comes in, rolls out to his right, pushing forward on the handoff. Taylorville in on that stop again. Nothing going. As that was uh, Bronner again. Another penalty against Civil my goodness. So we'll have and not, you know what? Taylorville will take that all day. That's sometimes you need a little bit of a break from all the penalties going against you. 
Kevin, see and if he wants for a while, especially the first half of the season, that happened a lot. So, second and four from the 47. And yeah, yeah, they're they not. Didn't add the yard. They haven't to accepted it. It, the penalty yet. There now we go. Odom accepts the penalty. There we go. Trying to figure out what was going on there. Offense, five yard penalty. It's still third down. So that'll bring up a, as we expect, a second and nine from the 42 yard line. And Pining's got some work to do. Jack Pining, runner in motion. Pining rolls out to his right hand side. He puts on the Jets. Being chased, throws forward, passes incomplete, goes right through the hands of Brauner and falls incomplete. Jude Neiman in on the disruption. So it'll be third and nine. And again, another drive that the Eagles felt that they had in control and now a tough third and nine situation for the Eagles. This becomes a pretty significant play right here. Pining in the shotgun. Everybody on the line except for one wide receiver. Flag. Rolls out to his right, breaks the tackle. Now just throws the ball away. And Taylor will chase after it. They treat it like a fumble, but a couple, call, couple calls that could be made on this. Well, this there, was not maybe, a, there was not a close receiver. This is definitely going to be intentional grounding. But what the flag, the first flag is, is what you'll have to see. It might be offsetting. Motion. It is again, both against Penalties Civic reviews. Memorial. First one's declined on the legal shift. It'll be fourth down. And it's fourth down. They just pick up all the, the flag as is. And so there was, yeah, there was no intentional grounding. There was illegal shift, though. And, and so it'll be fourth and nine from the 42. And now, I, I figured that would be intentional grounding. It probably, nobody, should, it probably should have been. There was not a close wide receiver at all. And he was still in the pocket. Well, they'll punt it away anyway. Or maybe they won't. Let's see what they do. Here's the, and the punt is away. And not a very deep punt. I'll get down to the 35, 34. And that is where Taylor will start their drive. So, Tornadoes will have uh, four minutes and 18 seconds to go from their own uh, 34 yard line. Try to get 66 yards and see if they can't get themselves a 21-0 lead. As it sits, they are up 14-0 with 4.18 left. And uh, Mark Rare checks in. And uh, you got to like what you've seen from Taylorville so far here early in this matchup. They have shown a lot of tenacity, especially on defense against the Civic Memorial squad. He was in a very similar position with their roster as Taylorville. Oh, him in the shotgun. And takes the hand off to Hughes, takes it himself, pushes forward down to the 37, and gets pulled down on the quarterback keeper. The second and six, second and seven from the 37. Clock continues to tick. Yeah, that's a read option play off the right side. Good decision for Odom to keep it himself and pick up a few yards. Well, I'm trying to read that defense and say, okay, if y'all are stacked up on the right hand side or left hand side, let's go right. Odom, another hand off to Hughes. Hughes, this time, everybody's ready for it and gets a gain of maybe one on the play. To bring up a third and six from the 38. Manageable. It is much more manageable. And they haven't had many negative plays in the No, they've had a couple, but they've negated all of them by having big runs from Seth Hughes, which will be interesting to see what they do here on a third and six from the 38. Taylorville Tornadoes trying to pick up their second win on the season. This non conference matchup, the last game of the season for both teams. We were only able to pick up one victory apiece. Taylorville beating St. Edward and Civic beating Alt. Oh, throws over the right hand side, slipping and falling was Finn Neiman. Oh, or Coach Oda might have wanted pass interference on that one, but it just looked like he tripped on it. Fourth and six from the 38. And so Taylorville threes and outs. And they'll be forced to punt. 
Yeah, and those are the drives you want to avoid. But with a 14-point lead, you can tolerate a little more than usual. And the punt is up. Beautiful, booming punt again. This time picked up at the 15-yard line. It's a foot race. Left-hand side down to the 25. And then pushed out of bounds close to the 28-yard line. On the run from Michael Atterbury. Being chased heavily by Clark Rare. Rare and Finn Neiman were off to the races on that one, but Atterbury was able to pick up the good run on the left-hand side. And so now there's two minutes and 42 seconds left, and Tornadoes would love to pick up a, a, a turnover uh, this close to the Taylorville Tornado end zone. That would be ideal. First and 10 for the 29 for Jack Piner. Jack Pining, excuse me. See what Jack does here. Oh, bad snap, and Pining has to fall on it, and that's a great start for Taylorville, as that is a pretty big loss on the shotgun, and another bad snap. Bring up a second and 17. Yeah, not as bad of a snap as that high snap you saw earlier, but mishandled as he tried to fake the handoff before he had the ball in his hands, and that led to well, he mishandled the snap. So, he has second and 16 from the 23. Pining again in the shotgun. Another high snap. Rolls out to his right-hand side under pressure from William Blue. And it's intercepted. It's intercepted. Left-hand side. 20, 15, 10, 5. And down to the 3 for Jude Neiman. And Neiman with nearly a pick six on the left-hand side with Tornadoes. Just what the doctor ordered. Just what the... Yeah. <laughs> Jude Neiman read that play the whole way and just raced down to the three yard line. Give the assist to Will Blue because he rushed that left tackle along the near sideline. Great job. And now he sets his team up inside the five. And so now you only have three yards to go in a minute 55. Here we go. Odom. Loses the snap. It's in trouble. Looks like it's turnover. And it's going to be a turnover. Bad snap on that one. And just like that, it's gone. Ah, so it'll be first and... Same exact thing <laughs> that happened to Pining. And it ends up happening to Baron Odom. He tries to fake the handoff before... He has the ball in his hand. Yeah, just falls apart. Just does too much and too quick of a time frame. Sometimes that's what happens. So, what could have been a 21 nothing lead still sits at 14 nothing and loss of the ball. So, see what Civic Memorial Eagles do here. Jack Piney. Another handoff, right hand side, flag comes in and nothing going, pulled down at the 10 yard line. And uh, let's see what the flag is on this one. Came in the backfield. And I think that's what's gonna go against the big game. Number eight. My goodness, Adrian. More than 10, right? Yes, yes. Oh my goodness. It's very unorganized. Probably the most unorganized I've seen this year. Taylorville still in a good spot to score before the end of the half. They probably shouldn't give up a first down if that's their goal. Though. Remember that Civic will get the ball to start off the third quarter. Taylorville would love nothing more than to get a big stop here. Give them one last shot. My conduct. Try to do something. Oh. The flag is waved off. It's going to be second and six. Taylor Bell crowding the line, showing blitz. Another handoff. Boy, that time they are right there. Taylor Bell defense has been on another level today. Colin Albright in on that stop. Clark Rare as well, so is Wilson Johnson. Clark Rare in on the battle from Tornado. 
And timeout is taken for Civic. Both handle their blocks really well. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to WCIM, your information station. The warm weather is here, and now is the perfect time to get those house projects off your to-do list. Hi, this is Blake Richardson at NICUS Floor Covering, letting you know that we are here to help you find the perfect flooring, shower, backsplash, or countertop to fit your personal style, to help you enjoy the indoors as much as you enjoy the outdoors. With our wide selection of choices in hardwood, carpet, waterproof luxury vinyl plank, laminate, and tile, we have something for everyone. Our friendly staff at NICUS Floor Covering in Taylorville will enjoy meeting you. Come in today. We can't wait to see you. Now we'll pause for 10 seconds for station identification. The Big 870 WTIM Assumption Taylorville, 96.1 W241 CF Taylorville, 107.5 W298 CD Shelbyville, 107.9 W300 EH Pain in the Park. Huge investment. Probably the biggest of your life. Huge decision. Who's my realtor? Easy answer. Curvy Real Estate. Joe and his agents have been living, eating, and breathing this stuff for years. Curvy knows how important this process is to you. That's why your research, combined with Curvy's knowledge, energy, and effort, make a powerful partnership that'll land you in the home you really want. Buying or selling, you'll get the feeling Curvy's got your best interest in mind. Because they do. See them on West Springfield Road or online at curvyrealestate.com. Help support the Kristen County YMCA by sponsoring, contributing in-kind, and or attending the 34th Annual YMCA Benefit Auction on Friday, November 11th at the Pillars Event Center. Doors open at 5 p.m. Silent auction starts at 5.30 p.m. with dinner and live auction at 7 p.m. Tickets are 75 per person, maximum of 8 to a table with 200 person max. Over 100 live and silent auction items available to bid on. Come support the YMCA and help those less privileged. The Y for Youth Development, for healthy living, for social responsibility. Whatever temperatures this summer brings, your friendly and knowledgeable Bryant dealer is ready to help. Your dealer is committed to achieving a high level of training and skills and backed by outstanding products from one of the industry's most trusted names, Bryant. Whether you need a quick fix or an entirely new cooling system, your local Bryant dealer will do whatever it takes for your family's comfort. Schedule an appointment today by calling Blakely Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing at 824-4684. That's 824-4684. Bryant, whatever it takes. High school football means lots of action up and down the field. Touchdowns and cheering on your favorite team. You and your family need the nutrition and protein that farmer-owned Prairie Farms dairy products provide. Prairie Farms milk, flavored milk, cottage cheese, yogurt, dip, sour cream, and 100% Florida orange juice all provide lots of protein, vitamins, and minerals for the game or day-to-day -day activities. Choose farmer-owned Prairie Farms dairy products at your grocer or convenience store dairy case to stay in the game. Now's the time to order your new 23 vehicle or choose from over 400 pre-owned vehicles in our family dealers. General Manager Bill Pinkston here from Landmark Taylor, your GM store. You can now order your 23 model car or truck, including the refresh, Chevy Silverado, and GMC Sierra. Let us help you choose what 23 will work for you, or let us find your next pre-owned vehicle from our family of dealerships. And yes, we will still buy your vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. Your GM Superstore is Landmark Table online at LandmarkTable.com. And remember, building relationships, supporting the community, and service. These are things Country Financial stands for. We're more than just an office you may pass by as you drive through town. We're neighbors who lend a helping hand and support the fabric of our community, including charitable organizations, sports, financial education, and civic organizations. Since we're already neighbors, let's get together and chat. Call me, Brandon Bible, your local Country Financial Representative at 217-287-2332 to talk about the things that are important to you and how we can help you protect them. CMB's Wealth Management Group provides financial planning, trust, estate, and investment services for many families and individuals across Central Illinois, and we can help you. Hi, I'm Dick Henson, and I assist families in building their family's financial legacy. Click our icon at TaylorvilleDailyNews.com to make an appointment with me, Dick Henson, or with our business development officer, Mike Ozer. CMB Bank & Trust has been helping to open doors since 1854. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Uh, the Civic Memorial Eagles took a knee to end the quarter, and so that is how the first half will end. Taylorville Tornadoes, uh, Civic Memorial Eagles lead 14-0 at the end of the half. We'll be right back. Listen to WTIM, your information station. When we come back, we'll break down all the action from the first half, talk a little bit about uh, 
the Apollo Conference, and much more coming your way right here on WTIM, your information station. You've got a pretty full schedule. The last thing you need when you're buying a building or reinventing your home is a headache over title issues. Hi, this is Jeff Robinson, the advanced title group in Canada, closing in on two decades of successful closing, construction escrows, title searches, and title insurance services. Single family home, farm, or business, avoid the headache. Choose Advanced Title Group in Tannaville. See us at Advanced Title Group in Advanced Title Group. Thank you so much for being the best manager ever. We can't thank you for that. Time and effort you put into helping us achieve our goal. Thank you for always believing in us and pushing us into our best. We love you with your dad from the 2002 senior band members. Congratulations, Mr. Gunn. And now, ladies and gentlemen, now taking the field here, 2022, 23, under the direction of Mr. Chris Gunn, student teacher Madison Leak, and led by drum major Lydia Hopkins. The band has been busy this past few weeks. On October 8th, the band performed at the Effingham Marching Hearts Invitational Competition and brought home the Best Percussion Award for Class 4A. On October 1st. The band performed in the Mount Zion Marching Music Games and won first place and best drum major in Class 2A. Congratulations to the band for their outstanding performances at these events. Tonight, the band once again wants to thank the band's seniors as they prepare to march their final halftime show of their high school careers. For the final time, get ready to enjoy Uptown Funk, Leave the Door Open, and Run Away Baby. And now, award-winning drum major Lydia Hopkins, is your band ready? Tornado Marching Band, the field is yours.
And now, please welcome the Timberville High School dance team under the direction of Heather Oda. Now, now please stand, stand join, the join the cheerleaders, the dance team, and the band in performing the Tenor High School fight song, Go, Go Tornadoes. Tornadoes. Later we will be doing a little Q&A in Purple Rain. Thank you. Hi guys, my name is Abigail Mazir and I'm in charge of the Gold Walk. Why are you doing the Gold Walk? So the idea for the Gold Walk started on a student council trip that we went on in June. We were in Kansas City and I got the idea from a Texas high school. Uh, they had a week-long project that they did over all types of cancer and Taylorville knew that we wanted to do something about cancer, just one type of cancer, and we decided to do childhood cancer awareness because we are a high school and we all are kids. Could you explain the pledge sheet and where you can get one? The pledge sheets are available in the office, Miss Crow's room, or on the website. And the pledge sheet, you can either do a flat rate donation for how many laps you walk. So if you go to somebody that you want to get 
your pledge money from, they can give you a flat rate donation, or you can get a by lap donation. So say somebody donates you $5 per lap and you do four laps, you'll get $20 from that person for the pledges and the donations. So when will the pledge money be collected from those that pledged? From the pledge sheets, the money will be collected at the walk if it's a flat rate donation. And for the per lap donations, those will be collected within a week time frame and you are responsible for getting your own money for that. So is it the responsibility of the walker to collect the pledges or student council? It is the responsibility of the walker to collect their own pledges for what they got donated to them. Where and who does the walker turn in their pledges? The walker can turn in their pledges to the main office, Miss Crow, or Mr. Wilson. So how will the walk work? The walk will work starting at 9.15, we'll start our registration process, and then the walk will start at 10 a.m., and it'll go until 12 p.m. You can take breaks during the walk. We'll have a bake sale going on. We'll be selling water. We'll have music to listen to. It'll just be a really fun time, only two and a half hours, basically, and it'll just be a great time. We'll all have a bunch of fun. Who can participate in the walk? Anyone can participate from the walk. You do not have to be a student at THS or a community member of Taylorville to participate. You can bring your cousin from Aruba if you want, just anybody available. What are the times and the location of the walk? Registration for the Gold Walk starts at 9.15 on October 22nd, and then the actual walk takes place from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. So you're having a silent auction and a raffle basket. What can, uh, can you elaborate on those? The silent auction will take place with our bigger item baskets, so those will be worth upwards of $100 to $650, and then our raffle baskets will be from $10 to $100. Do you have anything else planned for the event? So during the event, we're going to have the raffle baskets going on. Those will be taking place through the entire time, and then the drawings for those will happen at 12 p.m. And then also during the walk, we're going to be selling wristbands, car magnets, t-shirts, and then like I said, there's going to be a bake sale and they'll also be selling waters. If anyone has any questions, who should they get a hold of? If you have any questions about the Gold Walk, you should get in contact with me, Abigail Mazir, Carly Ruxrode, Miss Crow, or Mr. Wilson. Thank you. Coming to a car wash near you. seniors next year and then I can't, I don't have enough air time to go through all the sophomores that will be juniors next year plus a pretty good turnout for the JV and freshman teams as well it's going to be interesting to see how those develop next year into juniors and that's exactly what this coaching staff has been pivoting towards for the last two football seasons they've been waiting for this sophomore class this now sophomore class to become upperclassmen and that's what you're excited about right now here at Taylorville Tornado Fan. The Phillies lead the Padres 3-2 to two in the fifth inning. Kyle Schwarber hitting another home run. Schwarber. As uh, the Cubs probably really miss that man. <laughs> Schwarber. Um, he has been fantastic for this team. And man has really been carrying them moving forward. Errors have been kind of the story here. Philadelphia with two errors so far in this game. And, you know, it, it, you, you hate to kind of talk about that stuff, but one thing that the Cubs did really well when they won the World Series in 2016 was they kept errors to a minimum. And if you want to win a World Series, the team that makes the fewest mistakes generally is the team that wins those games. Boy, you must have seen that 488-foot bomb from Kyle Schwarber. <laughs> Did you see the way you... Actually, no, you couldn't see the way it came off the bat. No. No, there, there was no ball. It was you, just gone. You, you just heard the sound. Yeah, and I love that sound. That is one of the coolest sounds in sports is a well-hit baseball bounce, or just flying off a bat. That is... There is no... 
maybe the only sound that I like better is the start of a race car mm-hmm. when they when they say start your engines. Probably the only sound that I like better in sports. Mm-hmm. Although we've heard a couple cool sounds tonight as Taylorville has just absolutely leveled some Civic Memorial Eagle players here. And sometimes you can hear those shoulder pads hit all the way up here in the press box. And Avery Cooper, the last half of football for Taylorville Tornadoes gets ready now. As the kickoff comes out to the far right side, the Eagles pick it up. That's Atterbury off to the races, 25-30, and then pulled down close to the 32 is a mob of players, that was not 31, that was 21, which is Andrew Fenredona. Jake McConnell knocked the blocker out of the way, which allowed the rest of the Tornadoes to scoop up the barrier. And, well, it's not a bad spot to start defensively. And so we start the third quarter, much like the end of the second, 14-0 Taylorville, trying to Crowd the box and see if they can slow down this running attack from the Eagles. Another handoff. Pining off to the race is Will Pining. Gain of about one, maybe two on the play. And then a second and eight from the 35. Taylor Bell really looking for a three and out here. Coming out of the locker room would give them all the momentum in the world. Taylor Bell already the most fired up we've seen from this team. And granted, Tornadoes have not had a whole lot of situations this year where they've had a chance to express their excitement. But one thing that Coach Odom has been very impressed with is just how hard this team, despite their record, has worked. Uh, just working, 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 no matter what the situation is. Another handoff, left side, this time. Good open field tackle made by Ian McGrath. Number 22. Yeah, great job sealing the edges. As McGrath gets there first to seal it, and then the ball carrier runs into McGrath. Rare was in on that stop as well. So here we go, pick up a third and four, another big third down play for this Eagle team. And in motion, hands off on the sweep. Left side, not enough for the first down, gonna be short again, this time the carry by Will Pining. That looks a yard short, Leroy. It is a yard short, it's gonna be fourth and one, fourth and inches from the 42. They're gonna have to measure it, just to be sure, but. The way it's... He looked way short. I mean, he did not look like he got it just from where we saw. Let's They'll bring up a fourth and one. You'll have to take a look here with the chain. I think the white cap wants a review. The rest of the referees are saying, well, I think it's short. But white cap says, oh, we better make sure. So they're going to have an official measurement here. We'll see what they rule. To get to the 42 and three quarters. Point. Yeah. And it's going to be. Uh, see. It's gonna be short. And it is short. So big play right there. It'll be a fourth and 142. Now, if I'm Taylorville, guess what? I am putting eight men in that box. I am stacking everybody in there. Maybe see if you can if you can't get them to move. Even if it means sacrificing the big play. In this okay. situation, I'm all right with that. If they get it off and all that, and they then you tip your cap and move on, I don't mind that very much. I get it. Not in a situation like this. You've right. already seen them run the ball a whole lot in a goal line situation like this. They can take a shot, so that is the gamble you are taking. Well, let's see what they do here. There is five up on the line. Odom, the, one, the man <laughs> on the one wide receiver split out wide. One on one. There is like nothing in the box. I think this might be a pass play, but you'll have to see. Looking over the sideline, let's see what they rule. The one on the on the far side. Clock starts, and now a roll over to the right, and he's gonna be short, he's gonna be short. Oh, he did not get through on the right-hand side, and an absolute stop as he pushed over. Taylorville defense absolutely just manhandled that side on the left. It did not look like he had enough to get it. They might have given him enough. Oh, they give him enough. Boy, it did not look like he got it. The defense really got in there and put a huge stop. It looks like he lost yards and they gave it to him. 
what it looks like. <laughs> mm. That's tough. He didn't have very far to go. No, no. He, he, he just he had, the, had a couple He just to had the reach and across, and then any forward progress, anything that he loses after that, it doesn't matter. So first attempt for the 43. Another handoff on the. No, it's going to be a triple handoff. Pushing forward, Will Pining. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard on the play after a couple handoffs there in the background. Good stop for the tornadoes on that, and as you get that many people touching the ball, you can start to get a little distracted as far as who you're guarding and what you're doing. Tibble able to hang on though and make a good stop. Almost jarred the ball loose. Second and eight from the 45, 918 left here in the third. Shotgun formation for Pining. Two wide receivers up top, one on the bottom. Throw here, throws it quickly, and hit as he caught and dropped. Hit as he caught and dropped, and Will Pining unable to hold on to that ball, and it's going to be an incomplete pass. Hurt the footsteps. Mm -hmm. Got tip, hit. Tip, 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 bang, and knocks the ball loose. He was pretty open on that. Soft coverage from the Tornadoes would have led to an easy reception. Wouldn't have had enough for the first down, but would have given them much better field position as it sits. Odom also played pretty far off along the far side along a very short curl route. I'm talking go three steps, turn around. That probably could have picked up some good yardage. As it sits, it's third and eight from the 45. 8.58 left here in the third quarter. Taylor leads 14-0. Trying to cap a Long season for the young men. Throws it, heaves it to the right side, nearly picked again on that far right side. And Baron Odom nearly picks off the reception. Instead, it falls incomplete, and now it's a fourth and eight. Three deep defenders, and Odom playing off and allowing that, giving up underneath, knowing that there's a linebacker buzzing the coverage around the sticks to gain. And that time, it worked out perfectly. The linebacker tips the pass. Odom almost intercepted it. So, fourth and eight from the 45, and uh, forced the punt. Here's the snap, a little bit of a high snap, nearly blocked the punt. Instead, it's got a 20. Plenty of room to the 30, 35, 40. 45 breaks the tackle, but to the 45 50, spins again, and pulled down at the 49 yard line for Jake McConnell. Good run from the young man who gets all the way back to now. He's one big flag comes in, two flags come in. One that came in at about the uh, at the 21 wide, and I got a double yard personal line, and then one after the play at the Taylorville 46. Taylorville. Bench needs to make, re remember the situation. Reel it in a little. Day. Yeah, yeah. They just—they're so excited over over this game, and you just gotta stay on the sideline and realize that there's a line. And I get being excited about it, but you gotta be careful in those situations. Let's hope that's not what it's for. They're talking to Coach Odom, which means a lot of the time they're wondering what Coach Odom personal wants to foul. do. Personal foul. Personal foul on Civic Memorial. Personal foul. Personal foul. Here, those yeah, penalties are offset. Bill, so it's offsetting. Dead ball foul, unsportsmanlike oh, conduct, number 21, 15 yards, it'll still be fourth down. At least that's my understanding. They, they might just leave it right where it is. Uh, I think they do have to yeah, replay, replay it. So they'll repeat the down and have another chance to return the punt. Both teams with a penalty on the same play. They offset. Do it again. <laughs> I like it. And that perhaps might have been the best punt of the night for Civic Memorial. Taylorville definitely, you can't dislike the, the, the fact that they have to re-kick it. They're farther down. <laughs> hmm. It's interesting. I'm not sure why. I think. I'm not 100% sure. So the Rob said he 
And then a personal foul. I'll have to go back and look in a moment. Here's the kick. Another kick that bounces all the way down to Kyle Smith again off to the races. Left hand side, he's got room to the 45 40. 40, 35, 30, saw his feet to the 25. He breaks the tackle. He is gone. Touchdown. Jake McConnell for the Tatumal Tornadoes on the punt. And might have been the best situation indeed, Avery Cooper. Give an assist to Clark Rare who blocks down the field without holding. That's been the huge, they're having a couple of plays like this this year for Taylor, but oftentimes they're called back because there's a holding call. Clark Ray are running the entire length of the far sideline with his man engaged with the block. That's a fantastic piece of blocking to allow McConnell to scamper into the end zone and make this a three score lead. That might have been the best play we've seen all season from the Tornadoes. Jake McConnell, a massive punt return for a punt six. Extra points up and through the uprights, and that makes it 21 0. Kevin leads 21 0, 816 left here in the first and third quarter. This is WTIM Information Station. We'll be right back right after this. You can have a pretty full schedule. The last thing you need when you're buying, building, or refunding to your home is a headache over title issues. Hi, this is Jeff Robinson with Advanced Title Group in Canada. In two decades of successful closing, construction escrows, title searches, and title insurance services. See the family home, farm, or business of Great the Head. Choose Advanced Title Group in Taylorville. See us at advancedtitlegroup.com. Advanced Title Group, excellent with integrity. That's our policy. Loading the kids in the car. Brokering peaks in the back seat. Mastering the snack handoff without even looking. Why are simple things sometimes so complicated? Thankfully, with auto owners, insurance doesn't have to be one of them. We work with independent agents who keep insurance simple, so you can worry about more important things, like figuring out what's growing in that cup holder. That's simple human sense. Call me, Casey McClure, at McClure Hamburg Insurance for all your insurance needs. 824-2266. NBA Final Score Report, Wizards 102, Bulls 100. Wizards spoiled the uh, game for the Bulls to fall short. The Blackhawks play a little bit later tonight. They play their home opener. As it sits in our game, Taylorville Tornadoes lead 21-0 on the punt return for a touchdown. Your affectionate punt six. <laughs> As uh, Jake McConnell. Capping off a very, very successful punt return. And that ex kickoff is out of bounds. Mm -hmm. out of so bounds. the Civ Civic Memorial Eagles will start off with great field position here. Down by 21, 816 left here in the third quarter. The blocking for the Taylorville offense on that punt return really was the difference. A flag is on the play. A really big difference there. And more penalties, penalties, penalties. If you go back to McConnell had a good return the first time around, but team, then five yard penalty and first foul. Yeah. Ended up being the best thing that could have happened to Taylorville. So, after the flag for being out of bounds, Eagles will take over at the 37. Look at the throw. Pining rolls out to his right, takes up on the run. He chugs, 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 and that late hit out of bounds. Yeah, that's absolutely going to get a penalty every time. Big late hit out of bounds. Miles Clayton, the man who committed the foul. It's hard to hit the corner. After the play, personal foul. Defense, 15 yard penalty. Yeah, that will get called 99.5% of the time. Good job to flush him out of the pocket, but you have to show a little bit of restraint as you see him head towards the pocket, or towards the sideline. And there may have been a little bit of embellishment from Pining on yeah. that one, but, but... the moment the quarterback starts angling towards the sideline, yeah. you gotta just let him go. Yeah. And that's an important lesson to learn now, especially in the way that the game is changing. First and 10 at the 40-yard line is a big penalty, and good field position for the Eagles. 
Finding looking to throw, another throw, and that one's off to the left, and his receiver, Atterbury, was to the right. We have a second and ten that they could be passed. Now, if it were maybe, I don't know, say a running back, that might not have gotten called. But no, it's that a does, quarterback. That does not get called on. on but it's a quarterback. Yeah, you got to protect the quarterback, yes. and that's the way the game's played. Yes. I fully believe that that was called simply because it was the quarterback running. So second and ten from the 40, Eagles come out of their huddle. Reset. Four wide receivers up on the line. Trips right. Going to throw again. Heine's got to hurry. Under pressure. Breaks through. Has enough for a gain of about seven as he slides forward around the 32. The quarterback Jeff Heine on the quarterback scramble. And they're going to actually pull it back to the 35. Yeah, where he started his slide. That's where they mark him down. The play is going to be... 35 from the 35. 740 left here in the third, third quarter. Taylorville the holding a three score lead. And nothing but tornadoes Go here. And what has been a fairly sloppy football game. Regardless, we'll take it. Shotgun for Pining. Three step drop. Fake throw, now throws it, has picked again. Picked again down to the 35 yard line and Jude Neiman. Jude Neiman gets his second interception of the night. And Taylorville will take over again. And Civic imploding here in the third quarter. Great job. Pressure and good coverage, too. That is a pump fake because he second guessed the coverage and then he went with it anyway. And Neiman right there to yeah, and, and that's, intercept it. That's just a rookie. And I'm not, I don't know what, what year the quarterback is, but that's a freshman sophomore mistake of just continuing to do what you were doing. Now, once you pump fake that direction, everybody's keying in on that spot. So, another handoff. Hughes tries to break through, but he's got nowhere to go. Back to the line of scrimmage, maybe he's no more. They're going to content to run the ball here on this drive, up three scores. They want to avoid a three and out. I was going to say, not necessarily thinking yeah, I blame them on that one. Second and ten, the 36. If Taylor would love nothing more than to add another score to this, but I wouldn't expect to see what we saw in the first quarter, which was a huge heave down the field. And pretty content with just handing the ball to Seth Hughes and saying, go young man, go. Shotgun formation for Odom. And sure enough, he hands it off. No, he doesn't. Holds on to it. Oh, stand directed. Takes it himself on the read option. That was kind of funny because he took off himself. There was a guy in the backfield right away. And Hughes was like, surprise. And by the time they realized it, by the time I realized it, Odom had already got down and enough for a first down. Yeah, a great read. <laughs> The Civic Memorial defense expecting the handoff to Hughes, and Odom says, nope. I'm telling you, they were in the backfield really quick, and Hughes was kind of like, I don't have a ball in this. First attempt for the 48, under six minutes in the third. McConnell in motion, hands off to Hughes this time, runs into his own receiver, then thrown back after the whistle. After the whistle was blown, thrown down by Sam Frey, number 55. And the second level for the 47. The crowd did not like that takedown, by the way. What a moment for the sophomore, Jude Neiman, to be able to pick up two interceptions on the final game. Going back to the last play, too. Just not enough penetration on the offensive line. As Hughes tried to find the left side. Right about here is where they blow the whistle. Right about here. And then... Hand up. Right hand side. And off to the races. Hughes goes. Breaks through. He's got a corner. 30, 25, 20. One man to beat. Breaks left. Still on his feet. To the five. Through. And gone. Touchdown. Taylorville. Seth Hughes. A man on a mission. You know what's going to be funny about this box score they run? I'm not 100% sure that Seth is the one that scores this touchdown. He loses it at the last moment. It is a tornado touchdown. I want to make that clear. 
but one of his blockers leans it up at the very end. I want to see who actually breaks the plane with it. I, if Seth Hughes actually crossed the goal line. Is it not that? What is that? Number three on the night? Yeah. Either way, it's a huge run for Hughes, and he doesn't lose the fumble. It's a score. Here's the extra point. Pick is up. And no good. Off to the left. As they hooked on the very last second, that wind is wreaking havoc. As, yeah, it's just. It's, He's here at it the whole way. Tommy T. Me showing us the instant replay. Let's see what happens here at the end there. He just found the gap. He was able to explode on the right hand side, found the corner, found the edge, pushed forward, still up on his feet towards the 35. But he had guys in front of him. Breaks out to the 20. And still up on his feet. Was able to cut the left. Still going, then gets pulled down from behind. Oh, he lost the ball well before. I think he did anyway. We'll see here. Yes, he lost it right there. So he, he doesn't actually, he's not credited with the touchdown. The touchdown actually goes to Travis Burke, the offensive lineman. Have a day, young no. man. Oh, no, nope, nope. it wasn't. Oh, Burke was the first one there. He couldn't come up with it. It actually. Jacob McWard. Jacob McWard comes away <laughs> with the touchdown, the offensive lineman. So. Hey, it works out, but the assist for Hughes on a huge run. McWard with the touchdown. There you go. 27 0 in favor of Fredos. I could not see that he had dropped the ball. That's so exactly, excited. though, why you, as a blocker, follow your runner. Even though you're not going to be able to do much from behind, you, must, you should follow him till the end. That way, if he does something like that, fumbles the ball, you can scoop it up wherever it is. So the Tornado is holding into a comfortable 27-0 lead after the Seth Hughes run and Jacob McCord touchdown. And here we go. Here's the kickoff. Bouncing and that ball died at the 16. Rise to roll up to the right-hand side. Nothing going and Cale Patterson gets taken down. That ball hit the ground and said, I'm good right here. I'm good right here. It did. Got right on the landing. So the Eagles will take over the 27 yard line. Could Taylorville initiate a running clock? <laughs> we'll see what happens here. A lot of it's going to come away from what happens on this play. So, first attempt from the 27, 447 left here in the third quarter. In the shotgun. Low snap. Got to hurry. In trouble. Hining still on his feet. Now he's got a little bit of room. Takes out to the right hand side. He's pulled down by a couple of tornadoes. Gave him about five or six, maybe even seven on the play. He was able to find a little bit of room. And Pining so dangerous that she's always able to run. It is a second and three from 34. But uh, Pining just dangerous. And a lot of times what we see is that pocket collapse. But that gives Pining that room to run. And Pining does love taking off. Good coverage to allow, well, to let him run away, I suppose. Here we go. Pining again throws it nearly. Or it is caught, not for the first down, right hand side, and pulled down close to the 46 yard line. We've seen this before where the Eagles are able to drive a little ways, and for whatever reason, the drive just kind of stalls out. We've seen that all season long as the Taylor Rutherford Hernandez have written that playbook. They have, unfortunately. But hey, nice to see it on the other foot. Of it. Put it well, you've got to give credit to the Taylor Bell Tornado defense. They have given the Civic Memorial team fits. This is this is a pretty good look too. You are losing Will Blue tonight after tonight, but after that, I mean, you have a pretty stacked junior, sophomore, junior defense. As it'll right be now. great to talk to Coach Odom this week about some of the stuff that he saw tonight. Throw is caught, but he falls right on it. And that's Will Pining. It's the Pining to Pining connection leads to a loss of about four or five on the play. Second and 13 from the 38. Taylorville Tornadoes picked up a win earlier this season against St. Edward. They're looking for their second win of the season here in this non-conference matchup 
against Civic, a team that Taylorville has struggled with in the past. I know these tornadoes in Jeb Odin would love nothing more than to pick up a big win tonight. Throw is up and oh, nearly picked off. Went right through the hands of Will Pining. And unable to come away with that is Baron Odom. So once again, Baron Odom has had a chance to get an interception. And it just does not is not able to hang on. That's why you're a quarterback, Baron. Because mm. you don't have to catch it. <laughs> He's had a couple this year. But and he, yeah, and I say that he he absolutely has a couple yeah. of uh, interceptions. That's why but. he doesn't play wide receiver either. <laughs> so back to the line and back to the attack. Third and thirteen from the thirty-eight for the Eagles. Shotgun formation for Pining. Man in motion on the right. Bunch of wide receiver on the right hand side. Flag comes in, catches man on the screen. Nothing going. Ball. Thought the ball popped out, it did not, but regardless, nowhere to go. Number 11. That is an illegal formation. Uh, the referee pulled it out of his pocket and just waited for the snap to just to make sure that the offense didn't shift back into a legal formation. Yeah. As soon as the ball snapped, threw the referee it. threw it, it's fourth down, and I believe Taylorville declines the penalty, so... So, fourth and 13 from the 38 yard line. And once again, as we have seen all night tonight from these Eagles, the punt team comes back out. They did have one fake earlier in the, uh, towards the end of the first quarter, but for the most part, just drive after drive has stalled out. And the Eagles have been frustrated here so far in this Friday night matchup. Ball is botched. Able to still pick it up. McConnell, right-hand side to the 45. Still on his feet. Breaks the tackle to the 45-50. Still going. Breaks another tackle. Then pulled down around the 48-yard line. Another big run for Jake McConnell. And McConnell has had uh, a lot of yards on special teams. Pulled down by Nathan Heron uh, behind him. As uh, Heron saved what was presumably another potential touchdown return for McConnell. Another flag along the far side. Holding, number 22, right, so kicking a, team. No, it's a consent. Penalties refused. Civic Memorial also. And their penalties declined. Yeah, look at them doing the shuffle here over on the side. Boy, I tell you what, man. Travis Burke has been the fire for this, this Taylorville team. He has been everywhere tonight and has been an absolute monster as far as motivation goes. So 159 left here in the third quarter. Tornadoes lead 27-0 in great field position for Baron Odom, Seth Hughes, and company. So they get ready to start their drive. And they will move forward after the penalty. No, so yeah, I believe they're actually going to accept the penalty because I think a penalty is Coach administered from the end of the kick. Ten yards, first down. Re-kick. Yeah. And so once he found out that if he accepted the penalty, he wouldn't have to re-kick because it's a holding penalty and it will be enforced after the return. He said, okay, wait, I want that penalty. And so that's what he ends up doing. So what was great field position already is even better. At first and 10 from the 34-yard line, up Civic, run, right-hand side, Hughes still on his feet, gets hit from behind, still going. That hit from behind actually pushed him forward another three or four yards. And that will bring up a second and short. Good cutback towards the middle of the field. He ran off the tackles to the right. Finding the hole created by Judd Bates and Travis Burke. But then he cut back left, and I think he picked up a few more yards because of it. <laughs> that hit from behind was like, I got you. Wait, I don't want you. Second and one from the 25. Look for a quarterback sneak here from Barron. No, hands it off to Hughes. Right side, still on his feet. Breaks through the line. God, touchdown, Seth Hughes. No flags in on the play. And a touchdown. Slow to get up is Jacob McWard. McWard got stepped on as he was trying to get up there. He'll come off. Big, big touchdown, though, for Seth Hughes, who find a hole, found a gap, and took off. Great job. Great blocking. Great running. Keep the feet moving, young man. And run down that side track. Shirt off and everything. It's not that cold out tonight. The Beautiful night tonight. Beautiful night for football. Extra point is up. 
and through. 34 0 in favor of Taylorville. 115, their largest score and largest lead of the season. 115 left here in the third quarter. Taylorville leads 34 0. You're listening to WTIM, your information station. We can keep your farm growing. Jared Beckham here, Vice President and Chief Lending Officer at First National Bank in Taylorville. When it comes to agricultural lending, your lender should be as strong as the equipment it finances. We at the First National Bank in Taylorville have over 60 years of serving agriculture. We have a relationship with our customers, providing them credit for inputs, equipment, and real estate. See us today and let First National Bank in Taylorville work for you. Member FDIC. High school football means lots of action up and down the field. Touchdowns and cheering on your favorite team. You and your family need the nutrition and protein that farmer-owned Prairie Farms dairy products provide. Prairie Farms milk, flavored milk, cottage cheese, yogurt, dip, sour cream, and 100% Florida orange juice all provide lots of protein, vitamins, and minerals for the game or day-to-day activities. Choose farmer-owned Prairie Farms dairy products at your grocer or convenience store dairy case to stay in the game. And welcome back to Taylorville, Illinois. It's Finn Neiman gets ready to kick off here. Finn, expect the Lincoln kicker would get about 20 yards away from the ball before he would kick it. Hmm. Finn Neiman's kick very short to the 28-yard line, and that's all they need. They're off and running to the 40-45. Pulled down around the 48 on the return. Andrew Fonradona, I can't say his last name, able to get back to the 48-yard line. 47, 47. Hey, he would not be able to pronounce my last name either. No, so I don't. So I don't feel too bad. All right. No, you're probably right. On that. <laughs> Avery Cooper, lots to take in from tonight. But what's your biggest uh, positive that you've seen from tonight from Taylorville? You threw three quarters and you're pitching a shutout. Defensively, that's fantastic. They look so much more relaxed. Hand off, right hand side, breaks through, still finds the hole. Fire done. It's gone. To the 25 20, then pulled down. Boy, saving the touchdown on that one. Slow to get up, as that is Miles Clayton on the save. But it is a first and 10, and the Eagles have their best field position of the night. First and 10 from the red zone, the 16 yard line. Now, Sipic has gotten situations where they've had good field position. They've just ran the penalties that have caused problems to keep them from scoring. Will Taylor will be able to do that again here? Let's find out. 43 seconds left. Everybody crying in the box. Taylor Bill showing blitz. First and 10 from the 16 yard line. 38 seconds. Hands off to the right hand side. Fadradona. Out to the right. Short of the first down marker, but it is a good run. It'll be second and. Eight on the run. Thought he got a little farther than what he did. He did not. This will be second eight from 14 as Clayton comes off the field. Miles Clayton, the hero on this drive, as he was able to save a touchdown run. Might be the they might be able to get one more playoff here in the quarter. Eight seconds left. Let's see what they do. Everybody lines up under center. Pining gets the ball. Hands off. Phone Fonder Dona to the right. Another run, another stop, and that will mark the end of the third quarter. It'll be third and five from the 11, 12 yard line, 12 yard line. So that is how we will end the third. Take a 30 second break, we'll come back with much more. I want to thank the senior citizens of Christian County, Skewers Coffee. Don't forget to tune in for our Brandon Bible Country Financial Player of the Game. we got some choices to make tonight. You're listening to WTIM, your information station. Very right back, right after this. This is Jennifer Franken's daughter, Isabella. My mom's with the Kathy Garst sales team at the Real Estate Group in Taylorville. I'm Ellie Keel, Brian's daughter. And I'm Ava, Ashley's daughter. Our parents work together to help you buy or sell your home in Christian County. I know my mom and her team have lots of experience in the real estate industry. And they have a cool looking office right on the square in Taylorville. Come see my mom, Brian, or Jennifer at the Kathy Garst sales team. They're trusted, dedicated, and connected. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the WTIM information station. The Big 870 WTIM Assumption Taylorville, 96.1 W241 CF Taylorville, 107.5 W298 CD Shelbyville, 107.9 W300 EH Pain and Nickelback. And welcome back to Taylorville, Illinois, the fourth quarter. 
just getting underway. Tornadoes lead 34 0. Third, third and seven from the 13 yard line. And just what the doctor ordered to see if Caleb can get a bend not break and keep the shutout going. Man in motion, that is binding. He does get the ball right hand side. Taylor Bill smells that out a mile away, and guess what? He's going to be short. Six forty-seven is uh, Clark Rare in on the stop on that one. Taylor Bill defense standing strong here in this fourth quarter. Can they do it? It'll be a big play right Q and A with Purple Rain. What's your favorite color? Green. What's your favorite food? Spaghetti. Favorite holiday? Pink day. Um, favorite Purple Rain champ? Um, 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 Nino Party. Okay, thank you. <laughs> what they want to do. So, Taylorville Tornadoes trying to come away with a big win here on their last night of the season. And for the Tornadoes, they lead 34 0. 11 17 left here in the fourth quarter of what will be a big fourth down conversion for the Eagles. The Eagles have ran to this all night. They drive down all the way, get some really, really good field position, and all of a sudden their drive just stalls. I, yeah, and fourth and seven, it, you don't have a ton of options. No, especially with the way that the, you know, the way that the, the game has been playing out, right? If I'm Taylorville, I'm I really just can play back a little bit, don't allow the big play, and right. I don't care if you get five yards, because you're still not going to get the first down. Right. Let's see what they do here. Fourth and seven, 11 17. Everybody back out onto the field. Civic trying to get down to the three yard line. Fourth quarter. Hiding in motion. Now they're going to throw. Rolls out to his left hand side. Got plenty of time. Most to the left. Up in the air. Flipped. And once again, as we've seen all year, ball just happens to fall right in the hands of Civic after the ball is tipped up in the air and a touchdown for the Eagles. Hey, you pitched a shutout through three quarters. Fantastic job. But and a lucky touchdown. And I sometimes mean, really. it, sometimes it's just a matter of positioning too. You know, he, he was in the right spot for that ball to come off the defender. Rolled off to his left hand side. The ball was just tipped up in the air and just happened to fall. Extra point. And go for two. And in motion again, Pining. Now takes a couple steps back, throws it close and caught and touched. Our extra point is good. That was Watanato with the extra point, two point conversion. It'll be 34 to eight, but no harm, no foul, right? I mean, you are sitting, that is a lot of football to play. And for Taylorville, you've been moving the ball fairly well tonight. Yeah, I mean, you just need another score to really put it away. And even then, you might still walk away with a win. All right, so let's pause. Let's take a quick break to come back. We'll have much more coming your way. Fourth quarter action, Taylorville Tornadoes 34. Civic Memorial Eagles 8. Right here at WTIM, your information station. Now's the time to order your new 23 vehicle or choose from our over 400 pre-owned vehicles in our family dealerships. General Manager Bill Pinkston here from Landmark for Taylorville, your GM Super. You can now order your 23 model car or truck, including the Refresh, Chevy Silverado, and GMC Sierra. Let us help you choose what 23 will work for you, or let us find your next pre-owned vehicle from our family of dealerships. And yes, we will still buy your vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. Your GM Superstore is Landmark and Table, online at LandmarkandTable.com. And remember... What do you think, Avery Cooper? Onside kick here, 34 to 8, oh. 11, 12 left here in the fourth well, for, quarter. For Civic Memorial, yes. Taylorville, if, it, if it's Taylorville oh. kicking off. But Civic Memorial, yeah, I think maybe. Perhaps. That's what it looks like they're lining up for. And Taylorville's expecting it. Taylorville with their hands team up. Only one guy back. He's standing around the 30-yard line. That's, uh, I believe that's uh, rare back. 
So here we go. The kick is onside as well. Let's squibs get through the first side. Still loose. And finally, Taylor Brill does land on it. And that is Jude Neiman who saves the day for the tornadoes because the uh, squib kick from. And I will only call it a squib because it got through that first line. I believe the intention was for it to be an onside kick, but mm. went way further than what I think either side expected it to. So Taylor will take over at their own 38-yard line, and for Baird Odom and Seth Hughes, ain't no thing, man. Yeah, just keep running the ball. They've done a great job all night, especially Seth Hughes. Aaron has done a good job limiting mistakes. Shotgun, Odom, quick throw, right side. Hughes catches it hit as he catches it and pulled down by Cale Patterson. That's textbook as they come. Be a second and 11 on the loss. Quick throw out to his out to his right. Nothing really going though for Tornadoes. It has been so awesome to watch Baron Odom develop all season long into a like I said, much more comfortable, comfortable, confident quarterback. Footwork too. From from game one where he was looking over the sidelines every single play to kind of having an idea and feel of what he wants to do as Odom throws it up and that one's picked off. That was about as easy as a see, I I am sorry to the listeners at home. I absolutely jinxed that. No, you didn't. And that interception is picked off by Jace Brauner. Not sure who that throw was intended for. Well, and he, I just talked a little bit about the footwork. This time he's a little bit, he doesn't step into his throw. He's throwing a little bit off the back foot. He's trying to find Finn Neiman along the drag route underneath, and he throws a little bit high based off the pressure. And the pressure causes his feet, throwing it off set, and it comes away with an interception. So Civic will take over again. Right hand side, Taylorville are all there and everywhere, and eight men just bowl over, nothing going for Pining. They are using a very, one of their bigger ball carriers that, and they haven't used him this evening. Who do they have? Handling the ball for Civic Memorial. Oh, that's a big boy. Yes, he is. I think that's Logan Cooper. Now Pining does take it for left hand side, still up on his feet, close to the, no, actually gets pulled down. Gain of about two on the play, that'll bring up a third and five, a third and four, with the spot of the ball after the forward progress. And so another third and four situation for the Eagles. I feel like it's been third and four for the Eagles all night long. Yeah, they've put themselves in those manageable, manageable situations, but Taylorville's done a great job on third down. So here we go. Shotgun. Bronner in motion. Rolls out to his right hand side. Looking to throw. Got plenty of time. Still up. Got to watch the run. Throws out to the right and it's out of bounds. And now a flag comes down. William Blue for a late hit. Uh, roughing the passer and it's going against Will Blue. And for his credit, Blue picked up Pining after he got done pummeling him. Not before the referee calls the roughing the passer. You see he beats his man along the right side and then there's a little bit of help. The ball's absolutely out by the time <laughs> Blue lays the yeah, shoulder should, into him. William should have known better on that one. First and 10 from the 23. <laughs> William, William, my one last one for the <laughs> left hash marks for the Eagles. Shotgun, pining, fakes left. Now it's got to hurry. Rolls up to his right hand side, still up, throws it, nearly picked off. Instead, it's caught through and finally gets knocked down close to the touchdown or close to the end zone, but short. Atterbury on the carry. First and goal to go. And it'll be first and goal on the interception from the two. 8.50 left, but the Eagles running out of time, and that is the biggest factor against them. They will maybe taking their foot off the gas just a little bit, maybe. The interception did not help either. No, especially. I don't know if they're taking their foot off the gas with the 
like you said, the interception is big. Rushes forward, still up on his feet, line not giving up. No whistle yet. Eagles say they're in. Tornadoes say no, they're not. And it's going to be short. They still haven't made an official signal. Now it's short. <laughs> so it'll be... Uh, it'll bring up a second down on the play. They hand it to Cooper. The big... They don't even have his height listed. He's a big guy. <laughs> Plays a little bit of defensive line and a little bit of running back, apparently. Everybody up on the line. Here we go. Under center. Hands off right side. Pushes through and scores. And for the first time since week one, Civic Memorial has scored more than six points. They, uh, put up, they get up to 34-14 now. They scored 24 in that week one win against Alton. And they did it a lot. Just like kind of they have, they have tonight. Heavy run, a little bit of passing here and there, using play action, using a lot of motion too. They will go for two here, I would imagine, as we've seen them do all night long. Finding in the shotgun. And heavy, heavy run set, screenplay right hand side, and Bronner has nowhere to go. Taylor will smell that out the whole way, and it will stay 34 14. You listen to WTIM, your information station. Taylor Fernando 34, Civic Memorial Eagles 14, 745 left here in the game. You're listening to WTIM, your information station. We'll be right back, right this. Help support the Kristen County YMCA by sponsoring, contributing in kind, and or attending the 34th Annual YMCA Benefit Auction on Friday, November 11th at the Pillars Event Center. Doors open at 5 p.m. Silent auction starts at 5.30 p.m. with dinner and live auction at 7 p.m. Tickets are 75 per person, maximum of 8 to a table with 200 person max. Over 100 live and silent auction items available to bid on. Come support the YMCA and help those less privileged. The Y for Youth Development, for healthy living, for social responsibility. At Taylorville Vision Source across from the high school, we are here for all your eye care and eyewear solutions. Your eyes are a window to your overall health, so schedule an exam with me, Dr. Emily Smith, today. You can also stop in anytime to check out our new eyewear collections. Don't forget your vision benefits that expire at the end of the year. Let us help you get the most out of the benefits you've already paid for at Taylorville Vision Source across from the high school, enhancing vision, enriching lives. Go do some of Go do a lot of things. Taylor with Tornadoes. Lead. Yeah, 34 14, 745 left. Civic Memorial scored. And then an interception led to eventual six points from the Eagles. But Taylor is still in command in this game. Let's not sugarcoat this. Taylor does still lead 34 to 14. Yeah, and it's been a long time coming for the Tornadoes. Another onside kick attempt. Here's the no, kick. This time, time he boots it to the right. Boy, Baron Odom picked that up. I would have just let it go out of bounds. Instead, brings it back to about the 32 and then gets pulled down. I learned Baron Odom plays center field in baseball. He showed it there. He tracked it down like a center fielder. <laughs> he, he Over his running, shoulder. Running behind him to make that catch, man. I mean, that's your center fielder this year for baseball, if that's your thing. My thing. My thing too. 741 left. Taylorville trying to do a little bit better than they did on the last drive when Baron Odom threw an interception after missing his mark. Let's see what he does here. Shotgun. Hands it off. Finds the hole through and down close to the first down mark for Seth Hughes. He gets past the 40 down to the 43 yard line. Maybe just a little bit short. I think they're going to rule him down at the 41. We have a second and three. Yeah, and that is that's a good first play after the interception to right the ship. Yeah, second and one from the 42. They're content to run this clock down quite fine. a bit, too. Fine, fine, fine. I don't even care at this point. Another handoff. Hughes, right side, finds the hole, still up by his feet, and once again, tacklers from behind him help him out. 
Logan Cooper shoving it forward and up to the first down and then some. First and 10 for the 45. 6.56. You can smell it? I can smell it. The win? It's close. It is. It's not there yet, but it's, it's close. Win number two. I'm excited. Hope you're excited at home as well. So after the interception, Taylorville trying to right the ship here, right hand side, nothing going as they were all in the backfield there, easing that one up. As uh, Isaiah Aiden, the ball carrier. Isaiah Aiden, the ball carrier. It's all on the far side, my old eye vision. Not as good as it used to be. Wearing Coke bottle glasses anyway. Price in the space with these things. I'm gonna get some binoculars. I know it. Next season. Next man. season, I got. That's on my wish list. Like baseball season, I'll get yep. you some. Yep. So back to the right hash marks with Tornado sitting on a second and 13 from the 42 after that play. Kind of fell apart. High knot motion. Oh, them. Rolls out to his right, hands it to Hughes, finds the hole, finds another hole. To the 50, 45, 40, saw his feet, breaks through, to the 30, 25, 20, saw his feet, one man to beat, and, take, and the one man gets him. Down to the five-yard line, but Seth Hughes fired up on that big run, all the way down to the five, six-yard line for the Eagles. Wow, what a run, Seth Hughes. Great blocking up front along the left side of the formation. As Will Blue and Brogan Muncy set it up, watch this. I not too with a great initial point of attack. And Seth Hughes is gone along the near sideline. And Fantastic. here's the and here's the thing, right? We saw a ton. If you watched the last week's game, another roll up to the left, still up on speed through, and no signal yet. You're gonna say he's short at the one. Good run from Isaiah. Aiden. And if you watched last week, or listened to last week's show at all, it was the Seth Hughes show, and he put on runs I have not seen in a long time from Taylorville. Uh, just absolutely dominated. They just were a little bit short on defense. Another roll out to the left, and I think Aiden will be short again. He'll get the first and goal, but not the touchdown. Nothing official yet. I think they, they should give it to him, but... No, now I'm back. It'll be third and goal from the oh one. My goodness, that is the shortest third and goal from the. Wow, I'd love to see Odom just push forward. Let's see what happens. And play kind of breaks down. Everybody falls down. That time he got the first and goal. And it'll be fourth and one. Are you? I beg your pardon? Was this already goal to go? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Man, I tell you what, if I'm Baron Odom, I'm getting Isaiah eight and then Seth Hughes behind me, and I'm just saying, push me, guys. That's all I'm doing here. That's where they're going with Fourth it. and one from the one. Here we go. Hughes is right behind him. Under center. Everybody moving. Pushing forward. And not going to make it. He's not going to make it. He's short. Another big stop. Isaiah Aiden, the ball carrier on that one, and actually loses a couple yards on the run. And Taylorville, Taylorville's drive stalls out with at, at the four. I'll tell you what that is. Isaiah Aiden, the senior, they're trying to get him a touchdown on his last game. Yeah. On his, potentially his last drive. They gave it to him on three tries before, and he couldn't quite get it. Yep. You know they. You know what? They put the ball in his hands, though. Fine. And that's, yeah, that's as a senior, I think that's all you can ask for. You got the opportunity. Last game of the season, I get it completely. That's fine with me. So, take it over at the four-yard line, right side. Nothing going, and finally pulled down. No gain on the play. It'll be second and ten from the four. You know what? Isaiah Hayden has had a fantastic game blocking all day long, too. And I think He's that's the other part of it is. You know what, you've been blocking all day, son, so let's have you go in and carry the ball in for the end, into the end zone. It just know, didn't quite work out. You know, Walter Payton never had a touchdown in the Super Bowl in uh, the Super Bowl 20 for the Bears. Really? Never did. Greatest running back of all, in my, uh, what I consider of all time, never scored in the Super Bowl, despite the Bears' 46-10 40, victory. 
Another handoff in the shotgun. This one finds it. Ball's loose. loose. Ball's loose. And I think Caleb has it. Colin Albright on the fumble pickup. Let's see if they, there's still no signal yet. Caleb was all fired up. They say they have it. Jake McConnell is acting as if he punched it out too. <laughs> he picks it up and shows it to the crowd. <laughs> Let's see who knocks it out. Oh my First goodness. man there is Liam Pyatt, <laughs> sophomore linebacker. So Taylorville and Isaiah Aiden will have another shot at this one second. And it'll be a first and goal from the 13 yard line. Taylorville will try again here. <laughs> First to 10 for the 14, 2.53 left in the fourth quarter. Odom in the shotgun, looking to go, rolls out to his right hand side, hands it to eight, eight, no, oh, slips and falls. Down to the 12 yard line, another flag comes in. Aiden was trying to get the corner, instead he leaned left, as he leaned left, his body weight took him down. It'll be his second and 10. against Taylorville for holding. They'll back up quite a Number ways. Number 14. 246 left here in the game. Taylorville, comfortable 34-14 lead. Thanks to a couple touchdowns Number from Seth Hughes. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. It's still first down. Second and 19 from 23. 19 yards to go from the first and 10. Need to get down to the four yard line to become a first down. Mm, this is an interesting situation. I like it. Under center, Odom rolls out to his left, still on his feet, gets the hitch route, and boy, Aiden, once Aiden gets the football, he cannot run anymore. And Aiden takes three steps forward and falls down. There's a whole lot of running for not a whole lot of movement. He'll pick up a second down. It's twice now he's tripped on his own feet. And he's, if not three times, they stripped on his own feet today. Poor guy. They were really, I think the I whole know. sidelines thrilled just to I, see him I know get it. the catch. I but. know it. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely trying to feed the senior some touches. So it'll be second and 14 from the 18-yard line for Taylorville. Hugh, or Odom. Who else? Aiden, left hand side, nothing going. Gets the game of about two on the play, if that. You know what? If he cuts back onto the inside, he's still running. I he just didn't quite see it based on the way the play drew up. Poor, poor Isaiah looks tired, man. <laughs> he's got more touches here on this drive than we've seen all season. I get I there's bad respect for them trying to get, feed him the ball. And he He's held on too, that's the other part of it. Third and 14 for the 18. With less than 70 seconds left in the game. Another handoff. Oh, Aiden runs into his own defender, her own guy, and falls over. So after four tries to get the ball to Aiden, falls short, it'll be. Fourth and 16 to the 20 yard line. And I understand completely, however, comma. <laughs> we just have Isaiah run a hitch route down to the end zone and just cut Time left. Out. Yeah. Timeout taken. Memorial. Civic Memorial. Let's pause. We'll be right back. Caleb Elite 34 14. This is WTIM here for me. Building relationships, supporting the community, and service. These are things Country Financial stands for. We're more than just an office you may pass by as you drive through town. We're neighbors who lend a helping hand and support the fabric of our community, including charitable organizations, sports, financial education, and civic organizations. Since we're already neighbors, let's get together and chat. Call me, Brandon Bible, your local Country Financial representative at 217-287-2332 to talk about the things that are important to you and how we can help you protect them. High school football means lots of action up and down the field. Touchdowns and cheering on your favorite team. You and your family need the nutrition and protein that farmer-owned Prairie Farms dairy products provide. 
Prairie Farms milk, flavored milk, cottage cheese, yogurt, dip, sour cream, and 100% Florida orange juice all provide lots of protein, vitamins, and minerals for the game or day-to-day -day activities. Choose farmer-owned Prairie Farms dairy products at your grocer or convenience store dairy case to stay in the game. And welcome back to Taylor Rail. Taylor Rail kicks the field goal, and that field goal goes off to the left. A little bit short, a little bit left, and ultimately no good. So Civic Memorial will take over on the turnover on downs. But they got to score 20 points in 35 seconds. <laughs> oh, come on. Singing I have a good feeling about this one, Avery Cooper. Oversized lady you've heard it before. Fine with me. It's been a long time coming for this Taylorville team who uh, had a couple really good chances to pick up some wins this year. <laughs> Fell a little bit short against Mattoon. Know that they didn't get the season started against Mount Vernon the way that they wanted to. And uh, are really, really looking for a big win here. Quick throw to the left hand side. Ball's loose. That's going to be an incomplete pass, though. Pass was thrown to Michael Atterbury, who just got leveled as he caught the ball. When the dust cleared, the football was about three yards away from where Atterbury was. Bring up a second and ten. Well, good season for the Tornadoes. You had that win against St. Edward. And, and, you know, that was kind of in a heartbreaking fashion. It's nice to see this one in a and little I, bit more yeah. relaxed way. And I will say the future does look bright for the State Liberal team. We're pretty excited for next year. As, uh, they don't have a whole lot of seniors that are graduating. It should be good for get some... Offense there, throws off the left-hand side, intended for Atterbury, goes way out of bounds, about three yards above his head. And uh, the uh, third and 10 through 20. Just airing it out, trying to, if they drop it, stop the clock, allow him to play another down. Big shout out to Tommy TV for all their help all season long. It's been absolutely fantastic and a true blessing to have you guys helping us out all year long, especially with the road games. You guys rock. Thank you so much, guys. We greatly appreciate everything that you guys do. As See you basketball season. Wrap up this football season. Low snap. The throw's going to be deep in the air. Two on one. And falls incomplete. Nearly picked off. I want to thank you, Avery Cooper, for all of your help this season as well. It's been fantastic having you by my side all year. I greatly appreciate all your help, too, as that throw was... There's about three Tornado players that could have made that catch. Instead, the ball falls incomplete on the heave. They'll bring up fourth and ten from the 20-yard line. And uh, about as close to an interception as you can have without having one. 20 seconds left in the game. And, uh, yeah, we are excited for basketball season right around the corner. We'll have about three weeks off, and then we'll hit the ground running. And, uh, boy, we are excited for this basketball season. Lots to uh, look forward to here. An unpredictable boys' basketball season. But those girls are going to be really good. They really are. Back to pass. Got to hurry. Throws out to the left. Incomplete. Throw is short. That one intended for Andrew Fondadona. So Taylor will take over with 15 seconds left. I would imagine it's just going to be a knee, but I've seen some crazy things in football before. As it sits, it is first and 10 from the Civic Memorial 20. Taylor will does have the ball, 15 seconds left. What an honor to be able to call games for you again this year. We appreciate every single one of you for listening uh, this whole football season. I know some of these games have been a little bit rough, we appreciate all the time that you've spent with us all season long. So Taylorville will just take a literal victory formation. Take the knee and that will be it. Taylorville Tornadoes will come away with their second win on the season. They will finish up their year at two and seven. Big win for the Tornadoes here. And that is game. Final score, Taylorville Tornadoes 34, Civ Civic Memorial Eagles 14. You're listening to WCIM, your information station. We'll have much more coming your way 
for the victory right here at WTIM, your information station. We'll be right back right after this. Now's the time to order your new 23 vehicle or choose from our over 400 pre-owned vehicles in our family dealerships. General Manager Bill Pinkston here from Landmark Potato, your GMC. You can now order your 23 model car or truck, including the Refresh, Chevy Silverado, and GMC Sierra. Let us help you choose what 23 will work for you, or let us find your next pre-owned vehicle from our family of dealerships. And yes, we will still buy your vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. Your GM Superstore is Landmark Potato, online at landmarkpotato.com. And remember... The warm weather is here, and now is the perfect time to get those house projects off your to-do list. Hi, this is Blake Richardson at NICUS Floor Covering, letting you know that we are here to help you find the perfect flooring, shower, backsplash, or countertop to fit your personal style, to help you enjoy the indoors as much as you enjoy the outdoors. With our wide selection of choices in hardwood, carpet, waterproof luxury vinyl plank, laminate, and tile, we have something for everyone. Our friendly staff at NICUS Floor Covering in Taylorville will enjoy meeting you. Come in today. We can't wait to see you. tonight we are so proud of our uh, tornadoes tonight and that they took the win on their very last home game thank you for supporting Tommy TV thank you you're watching Tommy TV